Millennium Stadium for the opening round of the World Speedway Championship in 2022. It's a new era of Grand Prix Speedway with Discovery Sports events now at the helm for the next decade. And I'm sure we've got plenty of exciting Speedway to look forward to. We've got a healthy crowd in, no doubt about that. And uh, there's no question we are looking forward to a spectacle. We've had qualifying earlier on and uh, that went smoothly with the world champion coming out on top or the two-time world champion here we look at the calendar we start tonight in Gorosan in Croatia and moving on to Warsaw in Poland Prague the Czech Republic and uh, Tetro Gorzov Cardiff of course Cardiff back on the calendar delighted to that and almost certainly finishing up in Torun but here we are in uh, Gorosan and uh, we are thoroughly looking it's a decade since we've been here it was 2012 for the last time we visited this part of the world and we are about very soon to meet the riders super looking sh uh, shot from the, the aerial camera now the drone camera looking down on the car park looking down on a really really nice setup alongside me is former british champion former world number three chris Ladies lewis i must say what a spectacular stadium isn't it it's a lovely stadium it's a beautiful part of the world uh, here in croatia and uh, this stadium just outside uh, gosh and here we see the riders being introduced the new um uh, presentations being up the young uh, riders coming into a score Maki Zago, of course, a wild card coming up, has a great record here. Dan Bewley now, he, um, coming in to uh, substitute. Had a fantastic qualifying as well. Oh, yeah, today. terrific in qualifying. Jack Holder coming up there as well. Another last minute substitution for Artem Laguta. Yeah, Patrick Tudek, a welcome return to the Grand Prix Series. Exciting yeah. rider. Great to see Patrick back in the, the series. Mikkel Mikkelsen, the two-time European champion, the reigning European champion, looking for a really big series this year, getting off to a good start. Pavel Fuselski, really, really uh, exciting to watch, and he's got a lot to prove, I think, in this Grand Prix series, the young lad. Yes, indeed. Martin Veselik will be relishing the challenge here. I fancy he could have a big night. Robert Lambert also is a rider that's really maturing now and with the Speedway of Nations victory last year, you've got to believe he's going to be looking for a really big season. Oh, Jason, a rider I know well, working with him at Ipswich. He's had a pretty good start to the season. He looks confident. Max Frick, of course, a former Grand Prix winner, back in the series, and, uh, qualified through the challenge. Leon Madsen, yeah. former world number two, looking to recapture that form from 2019. Ty Wolfenden, we know that he's a three times world champion, but he's looking for more. Yeah, Freddie Lindgren now saying he's healthy, had all sorts of issues with COVID last year, really did struggle with his health, so got to believe that uh, he's looking forward to a a strong campaign. Yeah, Max Chinoski there, a rider that's got to produce something special this year for sure, Chris. He has, he's got to podium in the World Championship soon. And the red hot favourite, Bartosz Smarslik. He's there, the two time world champion. Who's going to beat him in 2022? And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our national anthem singer and sing all together. Are you ready? Please stand up. Crazy loud. Can't hear Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our national anthem singer and sing all together with Mr. Mirko Schwenda Giga. Yeah, Domovino, oi unachka. Zemljo mila, stare slave djedovino, da bi vas da sretna bila, mila ka nosi nam slavna, mila si nam ti jedina, mila kuda si nam ravna, Mila kuda si planina, te si dravo sa 
Dunav, oteci, nit ti Dunav, silu gubi. Sinje more, svijetu reci, da svoj narod Hrvat ljubi. Dok mu njive sunce grije, dok mu hraše bura bije, dok mu mrtve grobak krije, dok mu živo srce bije. Pljesak za našeg žigu. Well, Hvala lijepa. Super lijepa. rendition of the national anthem here. Terrific atmosphere in the stadium. Večeras bismo također uh, željeli uh, odati poslijeku down, počas poznatom takozvanom are, velikom glasu Spidea. We are looking forward to uh, a group Super Grand Prix, but... Um, so, very recently we lost somebody very dear to our hearts got to say it was the voice of Speedway Nigel Pearson passed away very suddenly at the Easter weekend we pay tribute to him now Yeah, when I was there alongside him that night, it was an extraordinary race when Chris Harris stole that win again when from Chris Harris, from Greg Hancock rather. And I must say I'm quite emotional about that because Nigel Pearson was a very dear friend of mine and uh, it was a shock to us all when he passed away. Not too much longer now. Riders will gently make their way back towards the pit area. And uh, we will wait. With, uh, it won't be too much longer before the riders uh, begin to make themselves ready for the opening race in the 2022 World Championship. I would just like to say a few words about my dear friend, Nigel Pearson. We had a special relationship. We had a, a chemistry that I think was very special working together for 20 years and I know I'm going to miss him like crazy his family of course Kerry Liam Jake Sarah I, uh, I know that uh, they will be going it's a, a tough time for all of them but there's no doubt that uh, he was the voice of Speedway and uh, I know Nigel looking down and this one is for you I hope we make you proud rest in peace my dear friend so, well, well done, Kelvin. I, I know how hard it is for you, mate. Cool. And um, we'll do this one for Nigel. Yeah. It's an honour to sit alongside you and uh, help you through this one, mate. Thank you very much, Chris. That's very kind. So here we see the um, lineup for tonight's Grand Prix, the starting list, Agar. Of course, um, uh, the wild card tonight has a good record here. Um, winning two Challenge uh, Grand Prix finals and uh, not too far from home, of course. There's plenty of support for Matty Zagar. Wasn't outstanding in qualifying earlier on, no. but um, I'm sure he's going to turn that around. And uh, it's looking a competitive lineup. Bikes out for the opening race, Chris, and we're about to get on with the action. And I must say that uh, everybody's on the edge of their seats. There's a really good crowd in and a terrific atmosphere. And uh, that's good news. Lots of new graphics and uh, pits and I must say very exciting indeed and uh, we've got Jason Doyle former world champion coming out in heat number one with Robert Lambert Jack Holder and Patrick Dudek who's also back in the big time speedway so a really good looking heat number one to start the series with yeah I'm really looking forward to this Grand Prix series it's a new era for the Grand Prix series under Discovery Sports events and yeah. they really have gone to town you know I mean the pits the, the push-off area the stadium uh, the podium in the middle of the circuit everything is absolutely spot-on and uh, it's just adding to the atmosphere 
and uh, I'm sure it's having an effect on these guys as they line up to go out into the arena now. I think you're right, and we saw some... Uh, the track behaved itself pretty well in qualifying earlier today. Uh, in the past, this track has been quite unpredictable, but uh, they've worked very hard with the surface, and uh, we saw it uh, behave pretty well. Uh, but this is when it really counts. World Championship points on the line. And uh, these guys are really beginning to uh, focus. There's no doubt that uh, we will be uh, very interesting to see how they get on. It's been a decade since we've been to this part of the world. They've won, they've run rather, three Grand Prix previously, with Nicky Pedersen actually winning the Grand Prix in 2012. We have got a small delay. Um, uh, we won't be uh, too far away, though, from the boys being pushed off. Some technical issue in the pits, and I'm sure it will be resolved pretty quickly but um uh, yeah it's it's held plenty of international events in the interim 10 years as well chris you know with yeah, european championships and challenge so um uh, well accustomed I, to running big events here yeah i i, I think jason doyle is uh, probably feeling quite lucky to be uh, out in heat one wearing the red helmet color gate one always a good gate here and uh, he only qualified 10th so to find himself being able to pick draw number one was uh, quite remarkable i think Yes, he was very pleased to take that. Uh, he'll get two inside gates, and one of them being in the very first race of the evening, the very first race of this year's championship. And uh, it's um, uh, too far away. We've got the two-minute warning on. And uh, riders now just beginning to make their way round. Jason Doyle, who has found, hasn't quite been able to recapture that form that he showed in 2016 and 17. Uh, he started the uh, season domestically with his league clubs in fine fettle. This is uh, the Australian now approaching the inside gate, and he'll be looking to get off to a really good, strong start. Here's another rider that must be very excited, a little bit nervous as well, Chris, as well, Jack Holder coming in to replace uh, Artem Laguta. Yeah, big boots to fill, but um, he's got to come off gate three, which traditionally and statistically here at Goshen is the worst gate. But, uh, you know, I think things are reasonably even in the first race. Um, I wouldn't have told that to him as he was lining up. But uh, Patrick Dudek as well off the outside, exciting rider to watch. So here we go for heat number one then. And we've got Jason Doyle on the inside in red. We've got Robert Lambert in blue going away from gate number two. Jack Holder in the white helmet colour going from gate number three. On the outside, in the yellow helmet colour, we've got Patrick Dudek, and it's a long way from gate number four. We heard from Martin Vasilik in the pre-meeting studio. He was saying that starting it really is at a premium at this track, and I've got the feeling that the inside gate just may prove to be advantageous in the early stages of the Grand Prix. Right here, here we go, sending down for the opening race. The tapes are up, and away they go. And it's a fabulous start from Robert Lambert out of gate number two. Just drifting a touch wide out of the first turn. It's neck and neck down that back straight. He just about holds off Jason Doyle, who settles into second place. Englishman out in front, completes the first lap out in front. Super stuff from him. Patrick Dudek into third place with Jack Holder at the back. But what a start, Chris, yeah, from Robert Lambert. Absolutely smooth as you like off the start. Just made the bike work absolutely perfectly. Came under pressure from Jason Doyle uh, for that first lap. Indeed, you could throw a blanket over all four of them for a, black, uh, for a lap. But uh, now the race is settling down. Uh, it's all a little bit around the inside at the moment. The track will take a few races to develop. Well, indeed, they're into the final lap. Robert Lambert not putting a foot wrong here said it earlier on he really is beginning to mature as a rider and he's putting away out in front his bike is hooking up he's looking good we're around the final corner of the opening race of the 2022 world speedway championship and robert lambert in fine style picks up the three points there he'll be absolutely delighted to get off to such a strong start in the championship second place for jason doyle patrick dudek in third place Jack Holder from the start and Robert uh, Lambert he just he dropped the clutch he just got himself positioned very very quickly uh, surprised that actually running wide like that he didn't get passed up the inside by Jason Doyle but Jason's bike not quite working as well on the slick conditions as Robert Lambert and Robert will be made up to start like that I think Jason Doyle will be a little frustrated to have uh, have let uh, Robert Lambert make the start on him off, off gate two because gate one really should be an advantage at this stage. But uh, yeah, for a lap there, very, very close stuff. It was indeed, uh, but uh, the 
man who has uh, formerly won the European Championship and won the Speedway of Nations last year, of course, in fine style in Manchester. He gets off to a terrific start with the three points win. Here we see the result now. Lambert picks up three. Doyle in second place with the two points. Patrick Dudek on one, and Jack Holder fails to score at the back. And um, it's a good start for them. Pick number two now. Not too far away, and we've got the two-time world champion Bartosz Schmarslik, who topped the charts on the time mm -hmm. charts in qualifying and did not hesitate to take the uh, number five starting position in tonight's Grand Prix. There is the main man. We were talking earlier, Chris, about the fact, is there somebody in this field that can really challenge him? Because he's coming into this series as the red-hot favourite. Uh, undoubtedly, he is the red-hot favourite, two times world champion, desperately looking to uh, retain or regain that title, I should say. But, um, yeah, you know, there are guys in here that can beat him. Uh, will they beat him on a consistent basis and score more points over the series? Possibly, but he's still my favourite, undoubtedly. Indeed he is. Off the inside, Bartosz Schmarslik in red and blue on gate number two is Matty Zagar. Pavel Schapelski coming into the Grand Prix. He goes out of gate number three. And uh, on the outside, we've got Martin Vasilik, who will be looking to get away for a fast start. But you've got to believe, with the form he's shown in the Polish League already this season so far, he really has been in fine, fine form. Smarczyk on the inside, takes up. Away they go in heat number two. And Pavel Szapelski out of gate number three. Fabulous start from him. Sweeps round the uh, outside of Bartosz Smarczyk. We've got Martin Vasilik on the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Running two wide, Zegar now slipping up into third place. Szapelski out in front, but you've got to say, oh, oh, Smarzik, Smarzik, on the outside, squeezing <laughs> underneath the handlebar. Superb stuff, eye-catching stuff once again from Bartosz Smarzik. Uh, Szapelski left him absolutely nothing there, and he just took it. Unbelievable stuff. You can see how he works the bite, the leg coming there out of the footrest just to regain his balance as the bike pulls a little bit hard unexpectedly there. But uh, Sparsnik, if there's any doubt that he's come here to win this uh, this round and this series this year, I think he's... Uh, it's a real statement of fact, isn't it? Yes, certainly, Chris. He really did mean business there, and he charges out of the last corner. And Bartosz Sparsnik wins at a canter. And I've got to say, he's just thrown the gauntlet down to the rest of the opposition. Chapelski getting away really well, but couldn't hold on to the lead. Uh, he came under massive pressure, and Smarslik absolutely super duper coming through into uh, the winning position. Yeah, from the start, Chapelski really did a good job from gate three. Not an easy gate to come across in these early races, and uh, obviously putting the pressure on Smarslik, but Smarslik. He's so confident, you know, any riders at the moment may look at this track and say, I've got to ride around the inside, I've maybe got to protect the position that I have. It's two points in the bag for him if he does that. But oh no, that's not the way he does it. We can see here as he makes the pass. Ooh, has to readjust things. Sapelski <laughs> makes a, a late bid to, uh, to convince him to back the throttle off. Uh, he does it a little bit too late, not quite enough, but if it had gone any further, that would have ended in tears. Oh, brilliant stuff from Bartosz Marsley. An out-and-out -out racer, the opening race of his campaign, and he comes away with a really eye-catching performance. And you've got to believe that this man is going to be the man to beat. So, yeah, three points to Bartosz Marsley. Beautiful move there, Pavel Szapelski, two points for him. Zagor coming through in third place, and Martin Vasilik just missing out this time, and he'll be reflecting on that. But. Um, Got to say that um, I think uh, that had everybody on the edge of their seat. So heat number three, back up at tapes, and uh, Leon Madsen there in the yellow helmet colour on the outside gate. Uh, he'll be looking to recapture that form that we saw in 2019, when he came so very close to actually picking up his first world championship. On the inside, Freddie Lindgren in red. We've got Anders Thompson in blue on the gate number two. Mikkel Mikkelsen on gate number three in white. And going from the outside in the yellow helmet color is Leon Metzen. But um, the two-time European champion coming out of gate number three, he would have been quite impressed with the way Schapelski came away from there, Chris. Could he repeat uh, yeah. that? Could he do something similar? He'll be buoyed by that, that's for sure. And he, he had a good uh, qualification earlier today in fourth place. So mm. he's coming into this race, uh, obviously happy with the bike, happy with conditions. Uh, Frederick Lingen off the inside, it's going to be hard to beat from there. I think he's going to try and capitalise on having gate Bit of a one. Scandinavian shootout here, I've got to it say. Is. There's it no is. question about that. But here we go, settling down. Heat number three, really green lights. Oh, Anders Thompson charges through the tapes. 
Oh, that's desperately disappointing for Thompson, the Danish rider, who actually qualified this afternoon very well indeed, but it's... Uh, you can ill afford to really give away rides, and that is a desperate start for his uh, campaign. He's excluded there. If you're new to Speedway and you touch or break the tapes like that, then uh, you don't have a reprieve. You are out of the race. Yeah, and it's going to affect his night as well because, you know, your first race, obviously everybody's nervous. There's a, a, a bit of the jitters, but uh, at the end of the day, now he knows he's done that. He's going to have to be reserved at the start. He can't afford to take any more nibbles at it. I can see there, it's, it, it's a guess, Kelvin. You know, he's he just impatient. Yeah, sometimes you can actually sort of have some sympathy because the rider on the inside of him may have moved yeah, and sort of yeah. encouraged him to go early. But when you see the replay there, that uh, yes, Steen Toft, our referee from Denmark, had no option but to just put the exclusion light on. We have less than two minutes before riders need to be up at tapes, and they need to be up at tapes. There is a little bit of... Uh, maintenance going on the bikes. We may well see a reserve rider, and we are. Number 17 is Nick Scoria uh, from Slovenia. will replace Anders Thompson here. We have seen him in uh, Speedway of Nations and also World Cup, so he's not unaccustomed to international racing, but I've got to say that this is a huge step up for him. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive step up. And uh, just a quick word about Frederick Lindgren. I had a long chat with him earlier today. Has uh, been wow. suffering last year, uh, very much so with long COVID. Uh, had a bit of lung damage, he, he couldn't train. Uh, he, he said he couldn't even do a 2K run. Uh, and every meeting, uh, he, he had a whole day in bed to recover from it. So it was tough. So on the inside in red is Freddie Lindgren. We've got gate number two in blue now, Nick Scorja. Gate three is Mikkel Mikkelsen in white, and on the outside is Leon Madsen in yellow. And uh, the uh, restart, second time of asking for heat number three. And uh, just a bit of nerve shown there by Anders Thompson. He'll be kicking himself back in the pits, won't he? He would have yeah. really, really desperately wanted to get away to um, uh, a fine start here this evening. So riders just settling down nicely. Green light is about to come on. Here we go. Tapes up and away they go. And Mikkel Mikkelsen once again, gate number three, providing a terrific run to the first corner for him. Down the back straight he goes. Freddie Lingwood. Oh, Madsen. Oh, Madsen dives up the inside, through into second place. Strong move from the Danish rider there. Mikkelsen out in front. Freddie Lingwood trying to respond, diving up the inside as they start the second lap. But Mikkel Mikkelsen got away. Fabulous, a house on fire out in front. Terrific stuff from him. Yeah, qualified well. He's come, uh, he's translated that into his first race now tonight. He's looking smooth, looking comfortable. But I have to say, Leon Madsen is working it. He's uh, building up plenty of momentum and speed. He's got good speed in the bike. And uh, he's fully fit now. He's, he's had a lot of injuries. But tonight, I have to say, he is suffering from flu, but it doesn't seem to be affecting him too badly. No, it's not indeed, but Mickelson's got this race under control. They're down the back straight for the last time. A clean pair of heels to the opposition. He's going to pick up a big three points in his opening gambit for this season. Madsen looking strong in second place. Not bad about that. He came through nicely when he got the better of Freddie Lindgren. Early doors in the race. But Mikkel Mickelson, sharp away from the tapes, looked good out in front. Really didn't come under too much pressure. Yeah, you've got to say Madsen may be threatened there momentarily. Yeah, we can see from the start again, gate three after I said it was uh, the worst gate statistically, seems to be working quite well so far. Mm. Uh, Freddie Lindgren there just... Soon, mate. I did, too I soon. did. Frederick Lindgren, having made a reasonable start from gate one, he just didn't know where to ride, and Madsen really made the bike work very, very well. Got it hooking up down the back straight, forces his way through on the first lap and uh, made, made the gap up a little bit, but uh, Nikelson was just smooth, kept, kept it in the right place, and uh, no way past for Leon Madsen. Yeah, nice ride from Mikkel Mikkelsen out in front. Got to say, a nice professional ride, didn't put a foot wrong. He'll be really pleased with that. That'll settle his nerves down for sure. He saw some nerves, of course, with Anders Thompson charging the tape. So three points for Mikkelsen. Nice start for him. Leon Madsen, a strong ride for his two points. Freddie Lindgren back in third, and Nick Scoria just failing to score. Magic you now is here just looking at him, and uh, he's an enigma, isn't he? I mean, he's such a good rider. I can't believe in in, uh, 
in the years he's had so far that he hasn't been able to podium at least in the championship. Well, that, that is a surprise. When you told me that st statistic earlier on today, I thought, wow, I can't believe it. He's a multiple Grand Prix winner. He's led the World Championship. Hugely talented rider, but... Yeah, massive star in the league racing last year, won both in Sweden and in Poland. It just doesn't translate it in any consistency in the World Championship. Right, we're up at tapes, and heat number four is about to get underway. We've got Ty Wuffenden, the three-time former world champion, going from the inside. We haven't seen a winner there from the inside yet, and um, uh, it uh, will be interesting. So, Wuffenden on the inside in red. Max Frick going out of gate number two in blue. Matze Janowski in three in white on the outside. We will see Dan Bewley, who was spectacular yeah, in the qualifying. Great. Terrific yeah. time he put in. Didn't really understand what he was doing, I don't think, when he was interviewed, but nonetheless, he, <laughs> he, he did remarkably no. well, and he chose to come out in this race, so um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how he get on, because Frick and Bewley were teammates back in the UK. But um, here we go, settling down for heat number four. Now away they go. Super start on the inside, but it's Janowski once again. That gate number three is giving you a terrific run to the first turn. Frick coming through, slamming uh, Ty Wuffenden up against the fence, down that back straight for the first time. And say, say Janowski out in front, looking very impressive at the early stages. Wuffenden now trying to respond up the inside. Oh, he's got that by hooked up. Frick oh. and Wuffenden tight down the back straight. <laughs> Crikey, breathe in, boys. Not much racing room there. No, Max Frick bouncing it off the fence going into turn three, but it's kept him ahead. But Ty Wuffenden, oh! So close Bewley. to the high side, and it. Bewley now, and now the Bewley's just taking advantage of that. But meanwhile, Janowski up front, keeping it smooth, riding out in the dirt mid track, and pulling away in this one. Yeah, Janowski's got this all tied up. He's a class apart. Bewley coming through into third place, an opportunist move there with Ty Wuffen and just losing momentum momentarily. But Matze Janowski, very impressive indeed. A big three points for him. Bewley coming from the back and actually threatening for second place as they complete the four laps. But that man out in front, brilliant ride from him. He'll be delighted with that. Really did have a lot of pace out in front. Terrific battle for second uh, and third. And I've got to say, that was probably the race of the night so far. And once again, that terrible gate position three makes the first <laughs> turn <laughs> and wins the what race. Did, but it was you, a fabulous start to do that. What did you say about that again? Well, it's, it's the statistics side. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, I see. It's, not, it's not my... Uh, it's, it's, oh, right, OK. Blame the stats. It's not my opinion. We're, blame, we're blaming the stats. But it was so tight out there. And uh, you can see here, Ty Wolf and the... Uh, that's where uh, Max Rick just managed to get himself back ahead of Ty Wolfen, but it was the uh, help of the fence and the dirt that built up around the bottom of it that managed to do that. Actually, Ty has actually kicked Max Fritz's bite there. <laughs> and uh, you can see Ty shaking his head. It really was an error as he dived in. So, super stuff from uh, Janowski, and uh, we'll see the results. Is it? Super ride from Janowski, three points for him. Max Frick in second place, two points. Dan Bewley, a strong ride from Bewley because he didn't get away very well. He gets the one, and Ty Wuffenden was in the thick of the action and really failed to finish. So the, three, the four winners so far is Lambert, Smarslik, Mikkelsen, and Janowski. And uh, a good, strong start from all of those four riders. Terrific stuff from them. So we've had a good, solid openers there. I've got to say, in heat number four, probably the highlight of the meeting so far, Chris. Yeah, I think the racing, the track is settling down quite quickly. The racing has um, actually been quite good. And uh, a nice mix-up of gate positions as well that are making the, uh, gate number making three. the start. So. Gate number three seems to be working quite well. Did you, did you say something about gate number three early, early on? Uh, I was <laughs> quoting statistics. <laughs> OK. All right. But uh, so no, no. I must say, it's been uh, a good start. Quite often, um, uh, the racing can be fairly processional early on. But uh, so far, we've seen some decent overtakes. One by Bartosz Smarslik. Brilliant stuff from him. And Matze Janowski, fast. the speed he showed there. Fast, yeah, fast. Smooth and fast. Yeah, definitely. Dan Bewley showed a lot of a lot of speed, track craft as well. Um, no, if we if we can see him making a start and getting out there with them, I think he's got the pace. Yes, yes, he will need to get away a little bit better. But he has got back-to-back -back rides, Bewley. He chose to ride uh, number 13. And uh, right. So let's um, let's get some reaction now, and uh, we can. Uh, 
go down to the pits very shortly. So uh, let's uh, let's hear from Scott Nichols, who's down in the pits now. Robert Lambert with me down here in the pits. Robert, fantastic first race there. I think all eyes are on gate one, but you made it happen off gate three. Gate two. Gate two. Well, you <laughs> caught me by surprise too. Yeah, I know. Noah's uh, got a good jump and managed to get across. And uh, yeah, the first hit was all on the inside and managed to keep calm and sta stay on the inside. So uh, yeah, that's what I managed to do. But uh, there's more race to come, so keep focus on that. Yeah, obviously maintaining focus is a huge thing. Are you keeping an eye on the track? It looks like that outside line is starting to develop a little bit now, so do you think that's going to come good later on? Yeah, definitely. It's um, pretty slick at the moment, but uh, I think the track is going to produce a bit more dirt and uh, yeah, make some more racing lines. Well, fantastic having the ride. Good luck for us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, interesting. It was a good ride from uh, Robert Lambert. Was, yeah. A strong start from gate number two and uh, was able to hit the front. It was nip and tuck there for a moment, wasn't it, with Doyle up the inside, but um, uh, an encouraging ride for the young British rider, and he'll be uh, certainly settling down and looking forward to his second outing. We will see Robert Lambert in heat number six, where he will actually go off gate number three. I think probably that's what Scott was maybe getting a little confused yeah. about. Jumping the gun a little bit yeah, there. Two, uh, <laughs> two, um, two time world champion, Bartosz Schmarslik there, just keenly looking on as they do the track rating. You will see this. People that are new to the sport, uh, track rating happens after each block of four races. There are three points for a win, two for second, one for third. Each rider has uh, five program rides and will go off one start twice. And uh, we will see. We're looking at Leon Madsen, just um, getting his team organized with warming up possibly a spare bike or the one that they rode earlier on. He actually looked pretty good, Leon Madsen. And, uh, work still going on the track, but some uh, people just, just quietly going about their business. Good, big, big crowd. And we're not too far away from the next race. And an interesting looking line of is for Heat 5. Kelvin, Dan Bewley, Jason Doyle, Bartosz Smarslik, Mikkel McKelson, who's uh, been looking pretty quick. Yeah, really mouth-watering race for Heat number 5, certainly. Bewley, who was fast. Doyle, who picked up two points. And uh, we've got Bartosz Smarslik, who was a fine winner. Um, uh, in the heat uh, in, earlier on, and Mikkel Mikkelsen again, another winner. We are going to be able to get some more reaction now with um, Scott Nichols, and he is uh, joining Mikkel Mikkelsen now. I am now down in the pits of Leon Madsen. Leon oh. had a good first ride, you're not feeling under the weather, but uh, a good opening ride. Yeah, solid two points in my opening race. Uh, that's that's all right, you know. Like like I said before, I've been sick all week with with the flu and fever, so just been been laying in the bed, you know, try to recover as best as possible. And uh, yeah, we we're gonna do the, do our best, but it's obviously not the best preparation you can have for the first GP of the year. No, how frustrating frustrating must that be? Like you said, all winter you build up for this. It's a big anticipated event, and you've had. To be fair, the last couple of seasons have been torrid with injuries, knee problems last year. Do you feel fit otherwise? <laughs> Before I got the flu, I felt fit, you know, but it really knocked me down in the canvas. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, I, I keep having those uh, unlocks all the time, but hopefully uh, at some point it will turn to my advantages, advantages you know. So, uh, um, yeah, but overall, in the winter time, you know, I've been building up the, the shape, you know, I, I've been feeling good, you know, I didn't have any injuries to deal with and and uh, came into the season in a very good shape. My league performance have been pretty good as well, so uh, I felt ready, you know, but then unfortunately this flu hit me, but uh, if we can if we can get away from this meeting today with uh, some decent points, I'll be happy with that. Well, I just hope it doesn't hold you back and all the best for the rest of the night. Good luck. Yeah, good to hear from Leon. That wasn't Nicole Mickelson, that was Leon Madsen. So, um, good to hear from him. Shame that he's got the flu, but he had a good ride there with two points in his opening gambit. And uh, you can never rule Leon out, you know. He can be, he can surprise you, can't he? He can find grip and he speed. He can generate where... a lot of speed yeah, exactly. from nowhere. And he can, he can come at you from the inside when the track's slick and you, you just wouldn't expect it. Um, He's very unlucky and he down, down plays his fitness as well because I know he still has a lot of pain uh, from a back problem that he's got. He still takes painkillers quite regularly for that. 
So, uh, yeah, he's, he's had his knee injuries. He's had a, 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 a shoulder injury much earlier in his career. And now he starts the series with flu. So he doesn't have a lot of luck, does he? No, he doesn't. But um, uh, he'll battle on. He'll show character. This man's got plenty of character and has had plenty of injuries as well. Um, uh, Jason Doyle had a strong looking ride in his first race. Phil Morris, the race director there, just keeping an eye on uh, track preparation. Just a bit of water going down. Won't be too much longer before we get back on with the action and heat number five will be underway. Bartosz Marslik, super ride from him in his opening ride. No question about that. Mikkel Mickelson, that's him there in the yellow helmet color. Impressive opening ride from him as well. Picking up the three points, but heat number five, Chris, is uh, as you rightly said, it's a it's a good looking heat, it really is. It is a good looking heat, and Bartosz Smarzlik uh, coming off gate three, which, as we know, has been working this evening, and uh, fantastic opening ride from him, though. Uh, you know, obviously topped qualifying charts with a, with a great time, first time out, and a fantastic race. You know, to be able to do what he did, go round a rider in, uh, in that opening heat. Yeah, he got Fantastic. the better of Chappelski, who was really wasn't making it easy for him, but there was no stopping him, there was no holding him back, that's for sure. Bartosz Schmarslik, and uh, he's coming out of gate number three, which has been the red-hot gate in the uh, first round of, first block of races. Here we see riders now. It's Nico Mickelson, who was really impressive as well, so we've got a couple of race winners here, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Jason Doyle in the blue helmet colour this time, coming out of gate number two, and he uh, will be hoping that he can replicate something that uh, Robert Lambert did early on by winning heat number one and uh, getting the better of uh, Jason that time. But you've got to say the favourite once again, and we're going to say this plenty of times this year, I'm sure, is um, Bartosz Smarslik. Um, if you can get the better of Bartosz Smarslik, then I think you're doing your job pretty well. It's always tough uh, when you come out straight after a, a big track grade with lots of water going down. You, you're never quite sure what to do, uh, particularly from the inside gates. You don't know if the outside's going to work good enough. Right, the lineup heat number five, Dan Bewley in red on the inside. Jason Doyle in gate number two in blue. Gate number three in white is part of Schmarslik. And Mikkel Mikkelson on the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Not too long now. Right, it's just doing a bit of gardening, digging around, trying to find a good spot to start from. Track is a little bit loose. We will see some ruts develop on the start line, that's for sure. Got to say, Dan Bewley's working overtime on the inside, Chris. Yeah, well, we've just had a track grade, and, of course, the grading fills up all of the ruts. So, you know, as, as, as the, the uh, block goes on, the ruts will appear, and it's much easier. But you come out straight after a track grade, you've, you've got to spend a bit of time to work out uh, exactly where you want to start, make sure that the rut you pick is, is not too deep, doesn't have any loose material in. If you want the material in it, you've got to pack it down hard. So you can see the guys doing there. So uh, yeah, look it's, like, it's an art. Just look. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, and there's certainly looks like there's a bit more moisture on the outside of the track rather than the inside. So we'll keep an eye on it's, that. It's been in the shade all afternoon. So when they were doing the track preparation, the outside half of the track didn't dry out. Right. Here we go. Settling down for heat number five. Green light is now on. And away we go. Got to say, Bewley's made a really good fist of it off the inside. Terrific move from him, but Doyle swung. What a move from Jason Doyle in the first corner. He really did switch to the inside brilliantly. Split second thinking there. Really had his brain engaged. Here comes Bewley trying to get the better of the Australian. Tights as they go into the first turn. Smarslik now battling away there. He's desperately trying to get the better of Dan Bewley. Comes through into third place with Mikkel Mickelson. Both the heat winners are now in third and fourth. Doyle out in front. Yes. Really now beginning to push on, Chris. Uh, yeah, Smarzik just trying to drill a hole through Dan Bewley as they came <laughs> into turn three on the second lap. But Dan seems to have settled down. Uh, but Jason Doyle out front, really smart first turn. Made a terrible start. The clutch just seemed to bite a little bit too hard for him. He went up in the air, but Smarzik is still working oh! away. He's not going to give in as they come here in here. Go. One more corner to go. Doyle's got this one all right. Up. Terrific ride Here from the comes. Australian, but out of the last corner, Bewley hangs on. That's a good ride from Dan Bewley to hang on for second place. Immense pressure from Bartosz Schmalzik back in third, and a shock result for Mikkel Mickelson, a winner first time out, failing to score in his second ride. But for Jason Doyle, moving on to five points from two rides, 
Terrific stuff from him. Yeah, Jason Doyle there. You can see off gate two, the bike doesn't go forward. It just goes up in the air. Smiles lip there. You can see his feet out, balancing the bike. But uh, it is Dan Bewley in red that just gets the bike to the corner. And you can see he's made the decision. He can't afford to drift too far wide, but he knew he'd got Smarslik there running in with him. And that's when Jason Doyle makes a perfect cut up the inside. Uh, Jason, in some respects, was kind of lucky to have made as bad a start as he did because it <laughs> gave him so much time to think about the cutback. Well, and, effectively, uh, he only had one up. choice, didn't he? He only had yeah. one choice to, to make that move, and it just paid massive dividends. So, yeah. It all opened up in front of him, yeah, and he, he, he was, made the perfect decision. It, 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 now we're coming towards the latter stages, and you've got Bartos Smarslik. Just chasing you down, Crikey, you've got to have some mental strength to hold him off. And I've got to say, Bewley did a great job to do that. Doyle picks up the three points, moving on to five. Dan Bewley, that's a three for him. And you've got to say that um, we're moving swiftly on. Mikkel Mickelson failing to score, and the two-time world champion, just a solitary point for him. And um, we're up to heat number six already. So, heat number six then, and they're up at tapes, and we're rattling through this. On the inside is Max Frick in red, Freddie Lindgren in blue on gate two, Robert Lambert, a winner first time out in white of gate number three, and Pavel Chapelski off the outside, who finished second in his opening ride and made Bartosz Smarslik work to get the better of him. So. Great ride from uh, Robert in his first one from gate two. Sure. To get the better of Jason Doyle and Scott gate three ordinarily. Uh, may have been concerned about that. But, um, <laughs> shouldn't be tonight. <laughs> no, not tonight, that's for sure. Frick just doing a little bit of extra work on the inside. Just getting himself ready. Freddie Lindgren looking to um, respond there. Maybe a few tweaks. They don't panic in their camp. Experienced campaigner, of course. He was one of the riders that uh, rode here back in 2012, the last time the Grand Prix was here. Green light is about to come on, it's on now, they settle down. Oh, bit of movement from Lambert. Will there be a red light? No, there isn't. No. Steams off, the referee allows it to go on. Oh, 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 oh Lambert on the inside. Clouts the side of Freddie Lingwin. They all stay up, don't know how. Really was a moment there for Robert Lambert. I thought he might just get himself in all sorts of mischief, but he's riding strongly in second place. So yeah, get up the inside. Speed. What a move from Lambert. Yeah, Robert was asking the bike for a little bit more traction. He was working the thriller, working his body weight, and it caught him out, and he clattered into the side of Freddie Lingren, who is not giving up. Uh, he's entering the corner a little bit wider, looking for the cutback. Seems to be the Got move to make so far tonight, but Robert really on top of his game at the moment. Super ride from Robert Lambert. It was a bit harem scarem, you've got to say. It was very close between the two front. Freddie Lingwin, as you know, he's a gritty performer. He's not thrown the towel in at all. But that inside line for Lambert round the first two corners is working a treat. One more corner to go. Lingwin trying to big swoop around the outside, but Lambert goes back to back. Unbeaten after two rides. Terrific start for the Englishman so far this evening. Got to say, that was a... Very good effort for Robert Lambert there. Freddie Lingwin didn't throw the towel in there. He did no, battle he, awfully he never hard. Does. <laughs> yeah, Robert just had a nibble there at the start. And as you yeah. said, is it going to be pulled back? It wasn't. And he has to work hard here now. You can just see he's working the throttle. Ooh. The bike catches him Ooh. out. Does fantastically well to stay on it. And uh, Frederick Lincoln must movement. have wondered what was going on. <laughs> he did. But, uh, yeah, after that nibble, then he just grabs a handful of clutch. You know, it was just a, a poor start. Um, he tried to anticipate it a little bit. But he did all the right things. Uh, but that is a moment. That, it is a serious moment. Like, so you know, easily could have been a massive it, high side down the straight. It could have been a high side. It could have been a, a footrest into a wheel there. There was so much that could have gone horribly wrong but uh, he managed to stay on it. Fair play, full credit to him. And then did everything right just to keep uh, the charge of Frederick Lingen behind him after that. Chapelski getting the better of Max Frick early on in the race, but this was the real move that clinched the win yeah. there for Robert Lambert. Yeah, fantastic stuff. He knew what he had to do. The cutback seems to be working very, very well tonight. The Robert Lambert has got a front wheel right over the line. Does that oh, we're, we're, we're a little bit close. Ooh. No, no, it stays on the track. Just about gets away with that. Terrific effort. Couldn't have been any closer there. Six points out of six. I have to explain at this point that if a rider puts both of his wheels over the white line on the inside, he will be disqualified from the race. That's right. And uh, good stuff. So the result is, as we see that, another three points for Robert Lambert. Terrific effort from him. And uh, back in second place was um, Freddie Lingwin. Um, we are waiting for the result, but um, we may get that.
we uh, we may not. But um, Max Frick just missing out that time. And uh, Pavel Chapelski in third place. Just saw Phil Morris there having a word with. Uh, here we see the result. Yeah, yeah. Max Frick was at the back. Chapelski picks up the solitary point. Lingren in second. And Robert Lambert with a very, very impressive win out in front. Fantastic stuff. We'll see them lining up now for heat number seven. Anders Thompson on the inside here. He's uh, already been through the tapes and excluded in his first race, so he'll have that in the back of his mind. Yeah, not ideal. He'll go from the inside gate, and uh, he needs to be just a little bit more patient. He settles down inside gate, red helmet colour for Anders Thompson. Ty Wolfenden in blue, gate two. Matty Zagar, gate three in white. And Jack Holder in yellow on the outside gate. Jack will be looking for a big star from there. Zagar, don't count him out. He's the wild card. Trying to make a statement in front of the organisers, the new organisers. He wants to get back in the Grand Prix, hungry for more action. Anders Thompson, of course, will be nervous. He hasn't got any experience, hasn't done a lap so far this evening. He'll want to try and get away cleanly this time and get amongst the points. And Wuffenden, a disappointing yeah. opening race yeah, to Chris. He wants to get it, really does need yeah. to get his nose in front he's this chasing time. It now. Here we go, settling down, the green lights are, the tapes are up. And Wuffenden makes a really good jump out of gate number two. Zagar's there alongside him. Wuffenden hugging the inside. Bike powers off the first corner. Down the back straight. Zagar! Oh, Zagar's oh, coming through. Big move from Zagar. Ruthless move from Zagar up this side. Wuffenden now responding. Wuffenden back up the inside. Terrific speed rate. Zagar now again. Back then up to back straight. Wuffenden just about hanging on out in front. Super lap of Speedway. Great stuff from Ty Wuffenden. He had to turn the bike so early. He had to run across the curb as they came into turn one on the second lap here. But he's got himself in front. Seems to have settled down. He can ride the track exactly where he wants now. He can make the bike work a little bit better for him. But Zagar, <laughs> he came through like a steam train, didn't he? He did indeed. One? Really did bore a hole in the side of Ty Wuffenden as they entered the third corner. Wuffenden now settling down. This is more like it from the former champion. Out in front, looking good, round that last corner. And uh, he's going to pick up a very valuable three points, showing some real character there. Disappointing opening ride, failing to score. But uh, Wuffenden bouncing back in fine style, came under pressure early on, kept his composure, and was able to come through in flying colours in the end. Zagar putting lots of pressure on him early on. But uh, here we see it again. Yeah, the action from the start, we can see Ty Wuffner makes a very good start, stays on the inside. He's uh, seen already that Robert Lambert made some great traction, but Matty Zaga, he just takes the, uh, yeah, shame we don't takes see the that. cut back up the inside now, coming uh, into oh, turn three. Brilliant. Yeah, we do. And he straightens Ty up, sits him right up. Ty wasn't expecting that at all. He took no prisoners there, Matty Zaga, as he steams through the inside. You can see he's got the bike working, he's generated more speed than Ty. And just moves him, that moves him out of the way. That was tight. Was that a bit rude? Was that a little bit rude? Uh, rude? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. He, he, I'm sure he rang his bell as he was coming <laughs> through. <laughs> ding, ding, out of the way. But um, no, it was fantastic stuff and some more great racing. Yeah, proper Grand Prix This, is, speed this is where Ty had to turn really early across the concrete. And I thought he'd gone too far. I thought there's no way back from that. No. But he uh, just keeps the bike going. Yeah, he just about saved it and was able to get his nose back in front and picked up a, a valuable win after failing to score first time out. Respect between the two riders. Wuffenden, that's more like it. He'll be pleased with that to get his uh, first points of the night. Three points for him. Zagar in second place riding strongly. Anders Thompson, the first point for him after an exclusion first time out. And Jack Holder, unfortunately for him, fails to court score for the second time this evening. So Jack with work to do. We're up at tapes now. Heat number eight. And uh, the second outing for all these four. This is the last race in the second block. We've got uh, Patrick Dudek in red going from gate number one. Martin Vasilik, gate two in blue. Leon Madsen in white in gate number three. And we've got uh, Matzei Janowski, who was hugely impressive in his first ride. So impressive in his first ride. Going from the ride. outside in the yellow helmet colour. Leon Madsen with flu in gate number three. Can he get the better of Janowski? But uh, I don't know. I think if Janowski gets his nose in front here, Chris, he could be a very hard man to beat. Uh, if he can get his handlebars just over the, the top of Leon Madsen, then uh, I think he's got it made. But we know how Leon will push him. He'll push him hard. He'll push him all the way. It's going to be a race to the dirt line that's uh, developed now. 
it is. Green lights on the takes are up, and Martin Vasilik makes a good start out of gate number two. He hits that first corner, holds the inside. Here comes Messi Janowski through oh, the pack. Oh, Brilliant move from the Polish rider. Now he dives deep in the bottom corner. Out the outside, Martin Vasilik in front. Janowski down the outside. Martin Vasilik slams the door shot. Metzen up the inside. Janowski round the outside. Oh, Here he nice. comes. What a bit of magic from Matze Janowski. Fabulous opening lap of Speedway from the Polish boy. Janowski is so fast in both of his races so far, and he's just stretching it now. Leon Madsen now up the inside. Great ride from him, but Janowski looking so impressive in his opening two rides. And uh, once again, he's got Greg Hancock back in his corner helping him today, and uh, seems to be working for him. Indeed it is. Janowski absolutely superb in the first half of this race. Now he's kicking on down the back straight for the last time. Madsen back in second place, but he has no answer for magic. Matze Janowski back to back joins Lambert on six points. Terrific ride, ride of the night. I mean, crikey, he was just like a knife through butter as he came through that first turn. Brilliant stuff uh, from Matze Janowski. I would go as far as to say that that was a proper, proper bit of speedway there from Matze Janowski. Yeah, we're seeing from the start again now and uh, fairly even break actually. Martin Vasilik hits the front. Uh, to begin with, but Magic Janowski, he's thinking so quick. He seems so well prepared today. Just watching him, how he's riding the bike, how he's reacting, and he's doing everything right. And he seems to have a lot of mechanical speed. That's not taking any, anything away from the way he's riding it. And Vachili there just putting a little bit more grip than he thought, perhaps, but he shuts the door. Uh, slams the jaw Look in front of Janowski, but Look he just... Look at that! Where did he get that from? So much speed, so much speed generated around the outside. We can see again, there's just no room there, no room at all. <laughs> uh, Vicuna even has to wait before he turns the bike. He has to put the old foot out there, get off the gas, and Janowski says, no, I'm coming through. Uh, top draw speedway there from Mate Janowski. Terrific stuff from him. Really, once again, showing great speed. And uh, that... Uh, wonderful style he's got and he really has started extremely well this evening we do hope that he can keep it going when he rides like that you know there really is breathtaking stuff from the polish man so janowski like robert lambert he will top the table on six points unbeaten after two and uh, we haven't quite seen the result just yet but uh, i'm sure we will but um got to say that janowski Certainly the rider of the night, along with Robert Lambert. Lambert's move on the inside also was very, very good indeed. Yeah, the standout riders at the moment, Janowski and Robert Lambert, both looking fast. So here we now see the results. We've got three points for Matze Janowski. Leon Matson picked up the two. Martin Vasilik on, on uh, just the solitary points. And Patrick Dudek, he'll be disappointed to miss out this time. We see the standings, two boys on uh, six points there with Janowski and Lambert. Jason Dorr moving nicely along on five. Smarslik on four. Liam Madsen there on four as well. But uh, some really good speedway we're wit witnessing now, that's for sure. Terrific Grand Prix so far, Chris. I've got to say that this is, uh, I've got to say this is better than I expected. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's been a long day for the for the track and the track staff uh, with the qualification taking uh, place earlier today, but the racing has been has been top draw, it really has. I've, I've been impressed, you know, we, we've got 16 of the best riders in the world and uh, they are giving everything. Yeah, they are indeed, and they're putting on a fine show, that's for sure. We've got more track grading now. We've uh, Every rider has uh, had two outings. And we're beginning to um, uh, really see a pattern emerging. Loving these we are bays. now. We are, yeah. We are now going to get down to the pits with uh, Scott Nichols for some more reaction. Yeah, Matty Zagar joins me now. Matty, how's it to be back in the GP circus? I know it hasn't been long since I've been out, but obviously yeah, it's just a one night off uh, for me. Uh, thanks to uh, people here, Pavlis family, they invited me here. Uh, a lot of fans here in Slo from Slovenia, so it is uh, basically like being home, so uh, I feel good, you know. Have you approached tonight differently to when it was a normal Grand Prix? Have you felt any difference? Mate, to be honest, it's the same old story, mate. It's the same, so... Uh, when I was younger, of course, wildcard was a different uh, story, 
But now it's just, you know, after so many years, uh, you come to GP, you don't feel like uh, you're here one night. So uh, definitely, you know, it, uh, the heart beeps uh, faster. Oh, well, definitely. We've got the heart rate monitors strapped on, so we'll be able to see just how uh, elevated your heart rate got there. Fantastic race you had there with Ty just now. It's a proper ding-dong affair. Do you enjoy that one? Yeah, you know, obviously Ty, uh, Ty beat me, but anyway, uh, I found some better speed, I would say, from uh, than in the first heat. Uh, I felt better on the bike. Uh, I could uh, ride it how I wanted it. And uh, but I, I think we need uh, a friction a bit more if we're going to find it in the bike to be faster. But you know, it's hard out there. Everybody's giving you know 100%. You know, it's got so. Uh, uh, to find yourself in the front is, uh, you know, if the bike's helping, it's pretty easy. But if it's not, it's, it's a really, really hard uh, job to do it. We know we talk, hear the riders talking about setup all the time. You said trying to get the bike a little bit faster. Um, have you got any ideas of changes that you're thinking of making or to help the viewers at home understand what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to get out of the bike? Yeah, you know, the main thing that the bike is pulling, you know, it's like uh, people, uh, you can have 1,000 horsepower, but you won't make it any faster on snow. And similar story with Speedway. Bike's got to pull your hands out and then it's good. Well, enjoy the rest of the night. Well done, Matty, and we'll see you Thank later you. on. Hello, England. Thank you. Yeah, good to hear from Matty Zagar. Pretty relaxed there. He, uh, he had a strong second place uh, in his last outing, and that ding-dong battle, as Scott was saying, with uh, Ty Wuffenden. And I expect him to uh, produce some uh, strong efforts as the evening goes on. Um, uh, looking now, it's um, uh, a good, good opening round uh, two blocks of races so far. I've got to say, thoroughly entertaining. I've got to say, that ride from Matze Janowski really was top draw stuff, wasn't it? He really did look very impressive. Undoubtedly the uh, fastest rider out on track. I'm not going to take anything away from him and the way he's riding is fantastic, but mechanically he's very quick. So, work going on in the pit base. This is Max Frick's pit bay, and uh, you can see they're just trying to clean that bike up after a, a tough second outing for the Australian. And we've got cameras in all the pit bays, so we can really get in and see exactly what's going on. Plenty of entertainment for the fans to uh, witness and observe. It's a good turnout, terrific crowd here, great atmosphere. The weather's been beautiful all day long. Um, really has been a gorgeous place. It's early summer, it feels like. It does cool off a little bit in the evenings. You'll need a jumper or a jacket, but uh, certainly ideal racing conditions. Yeah, it's been a great day with the qualification earlier. The fans taking full advantage of the fan zone just behind the stadium. Uh, plenty of music and fun going on, yeah. and uh, as they prepare for eight and nine, let's have a quick word about Masik Janoski, back-to-back rides for him, fantastic start, and he's, he's made his six points from the outside gates, which you would have to say that's probably unexpected before we got into this meeting. Yeah, it was, and uh, certainly the way that they chose the uh, um, uh, draw, they all went for the inside, they all thought that the inside gates would be the, uh, the uh, favourable ones, but so far that hasn't proven to be the case. We are going to get some more reaction from the pits with Scott. I do believe we're going to be able to hear from Ty Wuffenden very shortly. Plenty of support from Poland there. And uh, we will be going down very shortly. Yes, we are going to be able to hear from Scott Nichols. He's with Ty Wuffenden now. Yeah, with Ty now. Ty, it was a, a tough first race. We have a ding-dong caught in traffic. You just tell us a little bit about what happened there. Uh, yeah, nothing much. Max just came in and, and parked it a little bit and, um, yeah, I got my foot off and went to give him a kick because I didn't want to crash into him and uh, just clipped him on the back wheel, so cl just clipped his back wheel. So, all good um, is what it is. We, uh, we got a win in the last one, so I feel like we're getting a little bit closer with the setup. Um, yeah, keep working. So you got your ninja skills out. Did you make any changes prior to that second race? Yeah, just made it a little bit softer. It's pretty slick out there, so... Uh, a lot of the boys have a lot of wheel spin. You can see when you know when they're going down the straights and they're they're kind of half sideways. So um, yeah, just trying to get the thing to hook up, mate. Well, see if you get it hooked up. Looks like the boys are having a little fiddle right now. So good luck for the rest of the night. And thanks a lot. Yeah, good to hear from Ty. That was a great way to bounce back after a, a hectic opening gambit where he just failed to score. Calvin, I've got to ask: Have you ever kicked anybody out of the way? Um, I have, but not on a speedway track. <laughs> Um, uh, it's not something you see very often, but uh, quite clearly <laughs> Ty felt that that was uh, the required um, uh, action to take, but uh, fortunately he didn't uh, end in tears. We've got uh, not too much longer to wait now before heat number nine is underway. The uh, 
Water car is just about to exit the far end of the stadium. Great shot, uh, looking down. Um, First with the, the track and the way it's uh, ridden so far this evening. We have been here in the earlier days, so it was uh, quite some time ago, but, um, and the track used to break up, but it's uh, certainly holding together very well this evening. Yeah, that's a credit to um, the Pavlich family. They've relayed this track, they're using slightly different material, and it's behaving itself so far impeccably. We've got a very good-looking race here. We've got Matze Janowski up against Jason Doyle, both winners last time out. They're on six and five points, respectively, so looking good so far. Pavel Chapelski holding his own. Yeah, took it to, to Smarslik in his first one. He did indeed, and he's amongst the points in both of his outings so far, so he'll be pleased with that. Anders Thompson on the outside. I've got to say, he's had a tough Grand Prix so far. It's been a difficult evening for the Danish boys so far, but uh, can he turn it around here? He is up against it because he's got gate number four, and with the quality of the riders on the inside of him, it's going to have to be something pretty special for Anders to really try and hit the front, but uh, we know he's a real hard charger. Settling around, once again, plenty of gardening and digging going on after a freshly prepared track. Those ruts, as you were saying, Chris, they get filled in, they don't they? And in, a yeah. lot of the boys like to clear that loose material away. So on the inside is Pavel Chapelski in red. That's Jonowski in blue and gate number two. Jason Doyle coming out of gate number three in white. And Anders Thompson on the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Jason Doyle's had a solid start to the evening, five points from his two rides. Yeah, it's uh, good, that. Yeah, very good. He's got uh, the fastest man so far this evening on the inside of him, Magic Janoski. They have to clamp him down if he can. I don't think there's an option to go out wide and look for the dirt after the freshly graded track right now. No, I would suggest with them pulling the dirt back, they may well be hunting the inside on that first corner. And Jason Doyle is on the uh, favoured gate number three this okay, evening, Kelvin, Chris. What was it say? What did you say about gate number three? I can't quite remember. Remind me. Rem remind the punters at home. On this particular night, <laughs> it's the favoured gate three. Here we go. Boys settling down for heat number nine, then. All eyes on the green line. It's on now. Well, that is desperately disappointing for the Australian. I don't know if Anders Thompson moved on the outside of him. Uh, that may have encouraged him to go, but uh, Jason's going to be yeah, very, very upset. Here we see it again. And he's looking across. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, it's just an anticipation. So easy to do. Oh, such a shame when he's had such a good start. Yeah. To the Grand Prix, five points from two rides, really looking good on the bike, but that is a setback. But he's been there before, Chris. You know, he's going to have to just take a few deep breaths, and in his remaining uh, two rides, he's going to have to um, at least he's had a solid start. He's had a solid they? start, so he's, he's given himself a chance. You know, you, you do something like that after you've scored one or two points from your first two rides, and of course, it's a different matter altogether. But uh, no, he's, he's, he's still in with a shout. Yeah, disappointment for Jason Doyle. There we see it. And uh, he won't be taking part in this, and he's got to wait patiently now for heat number 13. Frustration for the Australian. He'll go from gate number four and heat number 13. We wait now for Dennis Fasakis from uh, Hungary, the youngster, coming out. And uh, we saw Nick Scorja earlier on, and uh, Dennis will be coming out, a youngster. I mean, this is a massive moment for young uh, Dennis Vasakis, isn't it? Because uh, Biggest race of his life. Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Here he is, number 18, making his way round to the start. Got to say that uh, Matze Janowski won't be sorry to see the back of Jason Doyle, will he? Because there's no question no, that that could have been quite a tussle yeah. between those two boys. Well, it's opened up the first turn for him, gives him a little bit more time to think about what he's got to do. But uh, I think, I think he'll be more concerned about the rider on the inside of him, Sapelski, um, because he's a, he's a tough cookie. I don't think there'll be any love lost between those two in the first turn, so no. I think he will want to get over the top of him and, and get it down on the kerb. Absolutely right. Riders back up at tapes for the second time of asking for heat number nine. And uh, we've got a couple of these inside gate for uh, Pavel Sapelski. Gate number two, blue, Matze Janowski. Then we got Dennis Fazakas coming out of gate number three in white. And on the outside, we've got Anders Thompson, who will also be looking to try and produce something here. Um, 
Pavel Shapelsky actually just uh, having some sort of issue with his bike here. Oh, yeah. There's a paint. Oh, no, that's a some... steel shoe issue, oh. I think. Um, yeah, that yeah. is panic yeah. stations. There's only it 17 is. seconds left, and he's not under power. The no, bike has stopped. I'm uh, not I sure think he's he, going to make it. I think he's yeah, in yeah, great he's, he's, If he can get it started quick, he will, but he's, he's got eight seconds. Oh, well, this, this is going to be tough this, for him. This could be disastrous. This could be... This could be absolutely disastrous. Oh, no, I, no, it's not going to do it. No, I think he has. I think the referee might just allow him to start. No, no exclusion no, lights on. No. That's desperate. Oh, the thing is, Kelvin, when, desperate. You, when you've got a clock there, you've got to be absolutely to the second, because yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. where do you draw the line? Yeah, you're right, Chris, but oh, you've got to feel we're down to three now. And uh, we're going to have another reserve rider. No, no. No, nope, we're yeah, going to have to wait for well. another reserve rider. Phil Morris at the pit gate saying that we uh, need to replace uh, the excluded Pavel Chapelsky. You've got to feel for Chapelsky. An overlook, a bit of a schoolboy yeah. error there, just leaving his steel yeah, yeah. shoe yeah. loose. He had to do the strap up, obviously late. Didn't to be notice. honest, on a track like this, I think I'd have taken the risk and thrown it away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Difficult call. There's going to be a lot of frustration in that cam. Oh, you've got to feel yeah, for it. He must be thinking it's his uh, <laughs> lucky <laughs> evening this evening. Yeah. All of a sudden, we've got now uh, Nick Scorgio making his way around. So we've got two of the reserves coming out in heat number nine. Um, uh, I can't remember seeing that uh, too often. Actually, a rider actually having a panic of doing his steel shoe up at the start line. As you rightly say, I have, both of us, I'm sure, have done, braced without Steve Shields. Yeah, and it's done. the sort of track that you not ideal, but you can get away with it. OK, all right. But uh, I wonder if you go over and tell Pavel Shapelsky that. I think you may need to wait just a couple of moments before you suggest that. And maybe he'll make a different decision next time. There you go. Anyway, settling down, third time of asking. Here we go. Matze Janowski, the clear favourite, you've got to believe, coming out of the gate number two in the blue helmet colour. Takes up and away they go. And Janowski makes a superstar from that gate number two. Hits that first turn. And you've got to believe from there, he's going to look very strong. Thompson's but Anders Thompson speed. coming he's on strong. Speed. He's got some speed generated from the outside. Really looking threatening there. Round the outside, Janowski under massive pressure. Anders Thompson once again running wide. Janowski runs wide. Fast. Thompson's up the inside. Whoa! Tight, really tight. Uh, the entry to that corner has been tight so many times tonight, but I think Yunoski now realises he's got to chase the dirt. It's still the fastest way round, but Thompson is able to generate speed when he's got Bikes hooking up. Bikes it's in a straight up. line, Kelvin. It, it really is. is going forward. Really going good. Thompson really, again. really beginning to pile the pressure on Yunoski. It's been so impressive. Yunoski having to work much harder than possibly he thought he was going to have to Absolutely. with two exclusions before the tapes even went up. But the final corner, Janowski looking like he's going to remain unbeaten with probably a sigh of relief there as he went over the line Absolutely. to move on to nine points. He's into the semi-finals already after three outings. Terrific stuff for Matze Janowski. Give a lot of credit to Anders Thompson there. That was a strong ride in second place from Anders Thompson. And uh, he made uh, Matze Janowski work really oh, hard on that. And you've got to say that's encouraging from Thompson, who had a desperate start with a tapes exclusion in his opening ride. Good yeah, speedway race again. Great speedway race. You know, we're both the reserves having to come out. Um, but uh, these two up front, you can see it looks like it's going to be Janowski all the way. Armchair speedway for him at this point. But Anders Thompson was just making the bike work. He had plenty of speed. And I've got to say there, <laughs> bike again catching him out maybe just a little rut down there we've seen a few riders do that but at this point i honestly think he's going to get up the inside of him but janoski riding so so determined he is not going to give up points easily here tonight he's feeling very confident and actually How there Anders thompson he's got himself in front there how and tight was that that yeah, really was close again. indeed certainly looking very strong and uh, matze janoski having to work overtime there to get the better of Anders thompson who really did he looks shocked there. He throws he really, he does. Uh, I don't know, think he was he does. Three points for Janowski. Strong ride from him. Anders Thompson, very impressive in second place this time. Nick Scorger in third. And Dennis uh, Fasakis out the back with a big experience for the young Hungarian. His uh, biggest moment in speedway, I would suggest, so far. We're up at tapes. Heat number 10. Uh, not too much uh, time to waste here. And uh, a winner last time out, Ty Wolfenden going from 
gate number three, and I tell you what, this is some lineup here. Leon Madsen on the inside in red. Bartosz Smarslik in gate number two in blue. Gate three in white is Ty Woofenden, and on the outside, with a warning, Robert Lambert, of course, when he twitched on the start, you do get a warning. If he does that again, he moves at the start, he yeah. will be excluded. That's so what we saw Phil Morris, race director, telling him after that race. Absolutely right, Chris, and that stays with him throughout the evening, so he will have to behave himself on the start. But, Chris, this is a super lineup. A uh, mouth-watering uh, race, this in prospect. What can Robert Lambert do from the outside in this one? Riding very, very well. Well, he's made some terrific moves on the inside on that yeah. first corner. If he can replicate something like that, who knows? He might well be able to get his nose in front. He's on six points. Three half-decent riders on the inside of him. There are indeed. Here we are, green lights on. Takes her up and away they go. Leon Madsen's made a good start on the inside. They fire into the first corner, but Lambert! Oh. Brilliant move from Lambert! Oh. Dives on the oh. inside, Madsen. Madsen now responds. I think Roar into turns three and four on the opening lap. Madsen out wide, woofing it up the inside. Bartos Smart, they also now beginning to move around the outside. Lambert settling in second place. Super ride for Madsen, really fast out in front. Bartos Smarzik now having to hustle his bike, coming through into third place. But Leon Madsen, brilliant stuff on the opening lap. Cracking stuff. And Leon Madsen, once he gets some fresh air, there's no stopping him. He can be exceedingly quick, just catching the edge Ooh. of the... Oh, Ooh. here comes Bartos Smarzik. Oh, he's going to drill a hole. Indeed, he he's is. got the run here. He's sitting on the back of the seat as he enters the corner. Of course, he's going to go Lambert past back. him. Oh, what a move from Robert Lambert. Here he comes again. again. Oh, oh. Oh. Speedway, fabulous speedway here in heat number 10. Super right from Neil Madsen. Bartosz right. Marslik just about hanging on for second place. What a fight for second and third that was. It's got people on their feet. Really fabulous action, Leo Madsen. Very, very impressive in the early part of the race to get himself to the front. But all the fireworks were going on behind him. What a battle for second place. And Bartosz Schmarslik coming through. That's what makes him a champion. Just from the start here, Leon Madsen looks like he's made a pretty good start, but then uh, Bartosz Schmarslik on the outside, and what a first turn from Robert Lambert <laughs> coming from gate four again. Not making a good start, gives him plenty of time to think about what he's going to do, and he makes exactly the right move at the right time. But uh, it all goes on after that. Leon Madsen just gets his wheels in line, and we know he's always got plenty of uh, straight line speed, doesn't weigh too much, and he makes a determined move up the inside, but it's all going on behind him. And Bartosz Smarslik just works it for four laps entirely, does not give in. And that can make the difference. That's what can give you the, the uh, gold medal at the end of the season. Each point he will take. Yeah, he had to work very hard indeed. And we see them swapping places here for fun. Every corner, second and third, swapping Madsen so away. Much speed. Oh, this is uh, once again. But you're absolutely right, Chris. This guy just never knows when he's beat, does he? And no. every point, Ty Woofenden, that's a shot from Woofenden. Second zero of the night. Even Works when he's done. trying to break the bike and turn. Madsen he's... picks up the three points. Bartosz Smarslik two, Robert Lambert one, and Ty Woofenden just missing out. And uh, Ty, well, he'll be disappointed with three points from three outings. Yeah, yeah, really up against it to make the semi-finals tonight. We're back up at tapes and it's heat number 11. On the inside is Martin Vasilik in red. Mikkel Mis Mikkelsen in blue, gate number two. Jack Holder in white, gate number three. And Max Frick from Australia, he goes from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. And Martin Vasilik, well, again, Got to say that uh, all four riders here are looking for points. There's no yeah. question about that. They're finding points hard to come by. Yeah, Mickelson and made a great start to the to the night with three points, but then a last place. Yeah, tough for him. Into the uh, middle part of the qualifying heats for the semi-finals. Really do need to get amongst the big points now. Settling down, the, the green light is on. Oh, the tapes are hell for a long time. Mickelson makes a really good start. Problems for Frick. Bikes packed up or some sort of issue away from the tapes. Down the back straight. Oh, here we go.
to go into the third corner. Oh, Gotta say, Mikkel Mikkelsen and Jack Holder really going at it with Martin Vasilic back in third place. Got a feel for Frick, who's tailed off. But Mikkel Mikkelsen now beginning to stamp oh. his authority on the race. Jack Holder hanging on for second place with Martin Vasilic pushing hard in third. And Mikkelsen's made himself comfortable out front, just chasing the dirt. Jack Holder knows he's got a tiger on his tail in Martin Vasilic. He actually had a little... Oh, Jack's got plenty of grip now. Can Vakulik make... No, he can't take advantage of that. But uh, Vakulik did have a little move at the start. Could have been called back, but um, it wasn't. Jack Holder still coming under immense pressure. But Mikkel Mickelson comfortably out front. Yeah, Mickelson out in front. He's got the race one. Just one more corner to go. This is a good result for Jack Holder, who's had a disappointing night so far. Picks up two points. Super ride for Mickelson. Really did. Once that uh, first corner he got away from there, he did show some good speed and pulled away. He'll be pleased with that. Martin Vasilik back in third place. Disappointment for him. And whatever went on with Max Frick, um, uh, just couldn't get away from the start. Some sort of mechanical issue. We'll see the, uh, the start again. I can yeah, see what you mean. There was a little, yeah, yeah. little bit of movement again from there. Tiny little bit of movement, but... Uh, Referee decided to let it go, which was quite right because I think he disadvantaged himself anyway. But uh, Jack Holder here, he makes the cut back. <laughs> we can see Mikkel Mickelson. These bikes, they react so violently. You know, the mechanics make adjustments to them to, uh, to get as much traction as possible. The riders make their adjustments as they're out there on the track, tight. moving body That's weight tight. around, working That's the tight. throttle. That's tight there, wasn't it? That entry to turn three has been tight so many times tonight. Oh. Crikey. Just shows so, the so calibre of these riders. Please for Jack Holder, first points of the night. Yeah, still yeah. the nerves. Yeah. So he, the nerves he knows he's in the mix now, got some speed. Good way to bounce back for Mikkel Mickelson after failing to score last time. Moving on to five points, the result. Mikkel Mickelson, three points. Jack Holder, two. Good for him. Martin Vasilik, just the solitary points. And Max Frick, whatever happened on the start line, really put pay to his chances right from the get-go. So, heat number 12 then, are up at tapes, and we uh, have uh, young Dan Bewley out here and Freddie Lindgren, the wild car, Matty Zagar, Dudek, who was disappointing last time, quite possibly may have changed his equipment here, or certainly made some setup changes, and uh, he'll be looking for much, much better on his return to the big time. Dudek, of course, a former world number two. On the inside, Dan Bewley in red. In blue is Patrick Dudek. Freddie Lindgren in white on gate number three. And on the outside, Matty Zagar. Yeah, Zagar had... was better last time out. Had a good scrap with Ty Wolfenden. He did indeed, and he'll be looking... I'm sure he's made some adjustments to his equipment. He'll be looking for a little bit more speed. He described it as the bike's got to be pulling your arms out. Yeah, and uh, that's that a little, little bit more detuning going on to get some more grip. But I don't think Dan Bewley will be too disappointed with the start he's made to this Grand Prix series. He's got three points from two rides, but I think it's been worth a little bit more than that, to be honest. Yeah, if he can get away sharply here, I would say that he can get, get himself very much amongst the points. Here we go. So settling down, heat number 12, the green light is on, the tapes are up, and away they go. And Patrick Dudek's made a good start from gate number two. He hits that first turn. Round the outside, Beauty's up the inside, pushing hard. Zagar's in there, but Freddie Lindgren now charging round the outside. Patrick run. Dudek certainly looking good out in front. Here comes Freddie Lindgren. Not quite there yet, but he's going to wind it on. Round turns one and two for the second time. Down the back straight, Patrick Dudek just about hanging on out in front. Oh, he's coming Freddie Lindgren, here we go. <laughs> Parking up, Lindgren now hits the front. Brilliant ride from the Swedish boy. It's going on everywhere in this race. They go and got himself through. Now Freddie Lindgren seems to have got himself clear. And is this race going to settle down? Because we've had a couple of fantastic laps. We have indeed. We're going to the last now lap now. Zagar now beginning to wind it on round the outside. Keep your eyes on Zagar. Zagar round the outside. Here it comes down the back straight. Brilliant effort from Matty Zagar to come through into second place. Out in front, Freddie Lindgren. Freddie Lindgren wins the race. Zagar, brilliant ride for two points. What a spectacular speedway race that was. Fans are loving it. He's got a big contingent of fans here that have come across the border from Slovenia to follow their man here this evening. But that man, again, that's a strong ride from Freddie Lindgren. And sensational action for second place. <laughs> Where do you Superb. start with this one? Superb speedway once again in heat number oh, 12. Patrick Dudek makes the start. Looks like he's uh, got it all his own way here. We can see now Zago at this point. He looks, he looks done with, really, for this race. He's out the back. Uh, but this race never settles down. We've got Frederick Lindgren working so hard around the outside of Patrick Dudek. 
and he was getting wider and wider and wider, not quite as wide as Zagar, but it just shows the track's working out there. It's a long way to go, uh, but the dirt has built up enough now to take advantage of, and an absolutely stunning race with it happening well, front, back and middle. Oh, yeah, you couldn't take your eyes off it. It was breathtaking stuff. And that was an important ride for Freddie. Yeah, he needed uh, that. Because he had three points from two outings. And with that win, he moves on to six points with two rides left before the semi-finals. And uh, that gives him a very good chance. Dudek there working hard, but he just yeah, couldn't resist. Hard. Couldn't resist that move around the outside from Lingren. He had to have eyes in the back of his head yeah. there, Dudek. And, and he... a great ride from Zagar, too. Oh, that move round turns one and two was top draw stuff once again. Really put it on the line. And the banking that they've introduced in that first corner, clearly working. It is. Big, yeah. big, big dividends there for Zagar. Bit of a debrief there. And uh, Freddie Lindgren clearly delighted with that. Three points to him. Zagar was outstanding for two points. And second, Patrick Dudek probably can't believe that he didn't win the race. He only picks up one. And Dan Bewley, well, welcome to Grand Prix. That really was quite a dramatic zone. <laughs> didn't know where they were coming from. Matt Sayanovsky leads the championship on nine points this evening. Robert Lambert on seven. Leon Madsen on seven. Mikkel Mik Mikkelsen on six, along with Schmarzig and Lingren. And then we've got Jason Doy on five. Good stuff so far. Well, this Grand Prix really is hotting up, and we are being treated to some superb action, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the last block of races really have livened up lovely. Yeah, and so is Matty Sega. He's uh, out again now in heat 13. Two rides on the top, but uh, looking forward to seeing him again. I am indeed, yes, and we won't have too much longer to wait. We have got some dignitaries here. We've got some world-class performers, and uh, I do believe we are going to be hearing from one of them very shortly from uh, Scott Nichols. I do believe we have have uh, Greg Hancock lined up to talk to us. And uh, yeah, let's get down to Scott. And uh, he's chatting with Greg Hancock now. Yes, yeah, so I have Greg Hancock here with me. It's kind of a bit like a reunion with Tony Rickardson on the team and Chris Louie up in commentary. Um, you're a, a big part of Masek Yanofsi's camp. We're just deciding what your actual role is, so what is your role in the camp? Well, uh, I kind of change it with the wind right now, but, uh, you know... I struggled no, to say the word consultant, so I thought we'd go, I'm a coach. Yeah, I can be a consultant, that sounds good. I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm here in support of uh, Magic, of course, and uh, everybody knows I got a, a big heart for this kid. I'd love to see him win, and uh, it's great to be back in the game. Yeah, Magic is actually on fire tonight, unbeaten so far. There's just a tiny chink in Magic's armor over the years. What do you feel that is, and what do you feel you can offer to, to kind of fill that little gap that's missing? Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's everybody's individualism, and uh, for him, he knows that it's, you know, he had a couple of rough years in that, that time of the year, but it's up to Magic. When he's, he's mentally so strong, he's got all the ingredients. All the kid wants to do is win, so when he's really ready to win, he will, and um, he looks great tonight. Yeah, definitely. How important is it do you feel for, we're talking about Mashek here, for him to get off to a really strong start tonight? You know, as a racer, you know, a former racer myself, getting off to a good start always feels good, but the main thing is, is to keep your composure and build as the year goes on. You know, it's, a, it's not a race, it's a marathon, and we have to, um, we have to stay focused. But um, like I said, the kid's got all the ingredients. It's just a matter of time. Well, let's hope he keeps those ingredients together tonight. He's riding exceptionally well. Thanks for talking to us. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Be good to hear from uh, Greg, isn't it? Um, such a fantastic rider over such a long period of time. Not a bad, not a bad man having your corner. I can, I can I know, and I can bet you if he swung his leg over a bike tonight, he wouldn't be too far away from the front. Be competitive. He would indeed. So great to see Greg here. We've got. Uh, Hans uh, Nielsen here, a four-time world champion. We've got a six-time world champion, of course, with Tony Rick Rickardson now working as an ambassador for Discovery Sports events. So um, uh, we've got um, some top-notch characters in and around the action here tonight. People really enjoying themselves, and that's great to see. And why not? Because we have had some ter terrific speedway in the last four races, that's for sure. Yeah, I've enjoyed the racing so far tonight. It's been top, top stuff. Yeah, it has. Going to see some highlights. We've got uh, Jason Dore there, 
just uh, waiting uh, to uh, go out. But, uh, we've got some uh, highlights coming up for you right now. So great stuff so far. I've got to say, just reflecting on the uh, first three blocks of races up to heat number 12, it really has been terrifically exciting. I've got to pay tribute to the Pavlik's family here because uh, whatever they've done to the track, it's working a treat. Previously, 10 years ago, this track was very unpredictable and we saw riders going all sorts of directions. But tonight, we're just seeing genuine, pure Grand Prix Speedway out there and great racing. Riders being able to trust the track to ride that close. And that's what it's like. You give these boys the surface to race on and then you're going to be royally entertained. Absolutely. And these guys clearly feel confident to go out there and race on this surface. They've uh, obviously been told what's been lacking in the track in, in previous years. They've listened to that advice, uh, taken it on board. And as you say, they've changed the surface slightly. They've added some banking, uh, certainly coming out of turns turn to two yeah and i think that has made a big difference to the racing yeah we saw that clearly demonstrated by matt uh, matty zago earlier on when he was able to rip around the outside there very very nice move from him everybody it's almost like a party atmosphere now the uh, sound system blaring out terrific atmosphere in the stadium we are going to hear uh, from jack holder very shortly down in the pits with scott um, he's just uh, getting themselves organized but uh, no, I have to believe that um, there's no question that, oh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to hear from Jack Holder. He's uh, quite clearly um, uh, not ready to talk to us. Jason Doyle, I'll tell you Under what. Under pressure. That looks like that may have changed the bike, maybe, but uh, there's no question after touching the tapes last time, this is uh, a big race for Jason Doyle after a terrific start. Uh, he's up against uh, two riders here and Zagar and Leon Madsen, particularly Madsen, yeah. was very impressive last time out, winning in fine style. So Jason Doyle, former world champion, going to have to show his mettle here as they come up to the tapes for heat number 13. It's, uh, it really is getting to the point of the night now where if you're struggling for points, you've really got two rides left. And to turn your night around, you still can do it. But to make that top eight, you're still looking as a minimum eight points, really, to be absolutely comfortably yeah. through. Jason's got to score points in this race just to take that pressure off, because eight's not even a guarantee. No, exactly right. He's in seventh at the moment on five after three outings. But you've got to say that um, uh, this is an opportunity. On the inside, Matt, say, you know, Matty uh, Zagar on uh, the red helmet colour. Leon Madsen in blue going out of gate number two. Max Frick coming out of gate number three in white. And Jason Doyle from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. What can the uh, Australian produce from there? Max Frick just did a couple of practice starts. Quite clearly, they had some gremlins in the machinery last time when it uh, coughed and spluttered away from the start. He'll be hoping that uh, they have fixed those problems right now. But Zega on the inside, still hungry for points, wants to make the semi-final, wants to go right to the final tonight. And Leon Madsen, beware the sick speedway rider, because crikey, <laughs> he's did he, he showed some real speed last time out. Settle him down. Green lights on and away they go. Sega makes a great start from the inside. Hits that first turn. Oh, Doyle just charges up the inside. Brilliant move from the Australian. Zagar's out in front. Round that first oh. turn. Oh, here comes Frick now into the action. Brilliant speedway on the opening lap, Chris. Yeah, you just can't afford, when they've had a track grade, it's really, really difficult. You can't really get off that curb. And if you leave the slightest hole, we've got Leon Madsen now trying to work the outside. Uh, Jason Doyle looks like he's going to cover that with Madsen making another cutback. And he's not going to give here as they enter the corner. Whoa. I don't know where the Doyle 
oh. can now creep around the outside. You maybe it's going to get tight. Very tight down the back straight. Doyle and Madsen battling for a solitary point. Super right out in front for Matty Zagar. They're into the last lap. Zagar still hanging oh, on there. Look at Doyle, Doyle up the inside once again, throwing the bike at oh, each other. Madsen responding into the last corner. You can't take your eyes off the speedway tonight. Zagar coming through in fine style. Terrific ride from him. But what a battle just for one point back in third place. My goodness gracious me, you can't take your eyes off the action this evening. Cracking stuff, absolutely cracking stuff. Speed and Matty Zagar has found, quite good, isn't it? He's found that winning <laughs> feeling again. And he's making a lot of fans that have travelled here very, very happy. Great start from him, makes the bye work. Jason Doyle again, very close to crossing the line with his rear wheel, but he, he didn't do that. And, uh, well, uh, again, you know, riders just constantly making the cutback, getting their wheels in line quicker than the opposition who's roared up the inside on the previous corner. So much there. of it, there's there not a lot of room. Not a lot of room. Lot of room, room. I tell you what, he was brave there, wasn't he, Jason? Yeah. Diving in there. Got to give um, uh, Matty Zagar a lot of credit. Here comes Frick. You can he see moved. Jason there, after going up the inside, trying to put the brakes on. He doesn't want to run across the corner, but he just can't stop the bike. No, the momentum took him just a fraction too wide, and Frick was ready to pounce. Grand Prix Speedway, you can ill afford to be even half a yard off the racing line. And we saw it demonstrated there. Madsen and Dor <laughs> working <Yeah>. so hard <laughs> out the back. This is a terrific back just for one point with Madsen at this stage hanging on to that position. Jason Doyle in the thick of the action throughout the four laps. Delights for Zagar. Clearly, absolutely. And that turns his night around. It does. Gives him a great points. chance now. And all of a sudden, with one more qualifying race to go, he's got a good chance of the semi-final. Three points for Zagar. Max Frick, a good ride from him. Two points for him. Leon Madsen, the one point. And disappointment for Jason Doyle. That exclusion. And then following it up with a zero, crikey, he is under grave danger of missing the semi-finals this evening. Here we are, back up at tapes. And uh, we have got heat number 14 here. On the inside in red helmet cover is Robert Lambert. In gate number two in blue is Dan Bewley. Martin Vasilik coming out of gate number three in white. And Anders Thompson, who was very impressive, he's on a warning. But Kaiki, he really did give Matze Janowski something to yeah, think about in his previous ride, and rode very well indeed. He goes from the outside in a yellow of this time. Robert Lambert here would really take the pressure off, sitting on seven points at the moment. Here we go, the tapes are up, and they charge towards the first corner. It's Bewley. Bewley makes a super start out of gate number two. Down the back straight oh, they go. Tighten up again. And he's managed to hang on there. That's a good effort from the youngster. Out in front, hits the dirt. He's a fast rider. I expect him to stay there if he can. Martin Vasilik working hard in second place. Around the outside, Anders Thompson getting in the action, coming through into third. Now he's diving into turn three. Once again, using the dirt on the outside. Lambert now relegated to the back. Yeah, Lambert oh. desperately needs to grab something out of this race, take a little bit of the pressure off. One ride to go, seven points. The pressure will be on, but Dan Bewley Anders coming Thompson. right out front. Yeah, Anders Thompson really working overtime. Coming through now into second place. Keep your eyes on the Danish rider. Can he get himself to the front? Bewley riding nicely, but Anders Thompson's got an awful lot of speed. One more quarter to go. Bewley's ridden really, really well here. And he's just... Oh, oh he my doesn't, goodness. He doesn't hang on. Oh, what a ride from Anders Thompson out of nowhere. Yeah, I think he took Comes that. through and possibly steals the win on the run to the line. Brilliant ride, absolutely sensational speedway again. Robert Lambert missing out, that's a shame for yeah, him. Yeah, it is. It's put Julia will be disappointed there. He'd done all the hard yards in the first part of the race. Here yeah, we see it again, here we Chris. See the finish. It was very close, but I'm pretty sure it's Thompson that takes this one. It's yeah, tight, it's, it's tight. There. It's tight, but Anders Thompson's got the run. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> well, I wouldn't uh, like to no, say. No, 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 that's not my job. <laughs> well, oh, here, here we are hearing that it's Anders Thompson that takes that one. Yeah, I think he does, but there's very, very little in it. What a ride from Anders Thompson. Yeah, brilliant stuff. He was nowhere on the first lap. 
Dan Bewley looked like he had it all under control, so that was a terrific effort from him. Yeah, Dan Bewley was, was riding a little bit tighter than the rest of them, and I could hear the bike even from here revving quite hard. Maybe he just cooked the tyre a little bit because they certainly reeled him in after the first couple Smashing of Smashing ride from Thompson picks up a valuable three points. Dan Bewley on two, Martin Vasilik back in third. He picks up the solitary point, and Robert Lambert, after a terrific start tonight, has just got one point from his last two outings. And he's got a hugely important last race coming up if he wants to maintain and give himself an opportunity for the semi-finals. Still got seven, but he'll want more than that. One or two points in his last outing. Here we go. Heat number 15 now, they're up at tapes. And uh, on the inside, we've got the unbeaten Matze Janowski going out of gate number one in red. Gate two, Jack Holder, second place last time. Six points for Freddie Lingo and out of gate number three in white. And off the outside this time <laughs> is uh, the one and only well. Bartosz Schmarslik. So here we go, and uh, we've got the heartbeats there. They're raising. Uh, Matze Janowski, 175 beats per minute. I'm not sure I could cope with that. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure that's... He's on the uh, there, I think, I, think, I think I might be a bit too delicate for that sort of heart rate, but um, <laughs> you can see that, that there may well be a spike when that green light comes on. Oh, yes. Great touch, that. Janowski, though, nine points. He shouldn't be... Uh, uh, too concerned because he's already in the semi-final, but he'll want to keep pushing on. What he'll are you going for here, inside or outside, or is someone crashing this party? Oh, because my goodness gracious me. I, 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 you can't predict it, can you? Janowski unbeat. Bartosz Smarzik on the outside. The green light is on. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, the red lights come on, and I, I, no surprise. Yeah. Clearly something was wrong with the tapes there. Uh, that was an extraordinarily long delay. And, it's uh, an automated system that yeah. uh, seemed to have a bit of an issue. Yeah, a few gremlins there, and uh, not a surprise. So there may well be a small delay here. These four riders did very well, actually, not to roll into the tapes there with such a long uh, pause. Yeah, and I sensed that they were beginning to, to back off, actually, just before the tapes went up, which I don't blame them. These engines don't like to be sat not under load, revving quite that hard for that period of time. Unsatisfactory start, and uh, yes, we're seeing Toft uh, putting the red lights on fairly quickly. I think there'll be uh, not only coolers on the clutches as usual, I think there'll be coolers on the engines after that one. Right. And we've got one minute to go with um, uh, Phil Morris, the race director, just informing all four riders at the pit gate that they've got one minute to go, or less than that now, to make their way round to the... Uh, start line clearly the referee is satisfied that uh, any gremlins they had there have now been resolved and uh, yes this is a very interesting race indeed we've got the unbeaten Matze Janowski on the inside gate we've got uh, Bastos Smarslik who is battling hard for points he is um, uh, on six points on three outings so he's got work to do <coughs> and Freddie Lingren got to say Freddie Lingren on gate number three on six points rode very well in his last race, so this is a very, very competitive race once again. Absolutely. There's no question that um, uh, no quarter will be given. That's uh, for sure. Be asked, I don't think. No, exactly right. So, settling down, second time of asking. Heat number 15. Here we go, the green light is on and the tapes are on. And they roar to that first corner. Janowski hits the first turn. Lingren's going to get a run Hold here. her up the oh, inside oh, there. The inside. Oh. Schmarzlick comes from nowhere, fires himself to the front. Fantastic move from the two-time former world champion, world number two, sensational move. And guess what? I've got to say that that really was a stunning move, and that's going to revolutionise the night. That's Ian off the back in second place. Holder now relegated to third with Freddie Lingren at the back. But what a move from uh, Bartosz Schmarsley. Unbelievable. I don't, uh, Jack Holder must be wondering, what has he got to do to stay in front? That move from Bartosz. I, I didn't even see it coming. I couldn't call that. And the next thing, within a few seconds, he's in front. He was indeed. It was a stunning move from the former world champion down the back straight for the last time. Janowski comfortably in second place. An outstanding ride from Bartosz Schmarslik, and he moves on to nine points. He's in the semi-finals now. You can never rule him out. Freddie Lindgren at the back. Matze Janowski drops his first point of the night. And he won't be too concerned. He'll move on to 11. That's a very good score indeed. But you... 
a breathtaking move from Bartosz Smiles in there. Jack Holder thinking, crikey, this World Championships me way, it's <laughs> tough. Really yeah, tough. From, from the start, we can see there, Janoski thinks he's got this one sewn up. He's made a great start. Jack Holder now with a cutback. He's got fresh air. And you're thinking, he's, he, he, he can't be passed. But Smarslik, he just look at him go through the traffic. He's in last place. And <laughs> he just oh, goes he's between Lindgren and Janoski. And then outside Jack Holder. He's not happy with the squeeze between the two. Mirror signal manoeuvre, wasn't it? It really was. Fabulous move there from Bartosz Marslik, roaring through the traffic. Got to say, that really did have us on the edge of our seats. That sight, that eye-catching style of his, terrific respect between the two riders, of course there is, but... I'd like was... to know what the heart rate monitor peaked at at that point. Oh, yeah, somewhere near 300 beats per minute, I would think. Three points for Smarslik, fully deserved. Matsu Janowski satisfied with two. Holder can't believe he wasn't amongst the big points. He picks up just the one. And Freddie Lindgren, it's a bit of a shock there, just picking up. Failing to score, rather, and uh, he's got work to do with one ride to go. Heat 16, they're up at tapes. Work to be done for all these riders, particularly Ty Wolfenden. Hasn't been his night. Just three points to his name so far. And uh, if he's going to make the semi-finals, I would suggest he's going to have to win his last two outings. On the inside, Mikkel Mickelson in red. Gate number two is Pavel Schapelski in blue. Gate number three in white is Patrick Dudek. And going from the outside, this is crunch time for Ty Wolfenden. Yeah, yeah, needs a win. Indeed he does. And uh, we've seen him respond early on when he ran a last. He then bounced back with a win. Needs to do it again now. Time running out. And uh, the pressure is certainly on. He would have expected more than three points from three outings, that's for sure. So, Wolfenden. Mikkel Mickelson was very impressive last time as well. He's on the inside. Here we go, settling down, green light is on. Tapes are up and away they go. Nicholson on the inside has made a good start, really good start. He hits that first corner, he hits the front. Dudek's around the outside, down the back straight. Oh, it comes to second, come into second place. Wolfenden up the inside into third. But Mickelson looked strong in front. Dudek now riding well, very well. Finding some speed. Round the outside for the Polish man. Square in the corner off. Wheels in line, down the inside. Oh, no, he can't quite get there. Yeah, he pulled out of, the one, that, out of that one the very last minute, but Mickelson now has gone so wide, two legs through. He worked for that one, but is Mickelson going to make the cut back? I think he could have the straight line speed. Oh, it's going to get close, no, he's Dude, back out of that one. And now we can see Wolfenden at the back coming through again. Yeah, Pavel Schapelski got the better of the three-time world champion. What action we've got out in front, though. We can't take our eyes off it. We don't quite know where to look. No. Terrific action for Dudek. Disappointing last time. He's ridden superbly well here. Down through the last corner. He's got the three points in the bag. St. Mickelson's really made him work hard. Dudek picks up the three points. Great ride for Mickelson, also in second place. And it just isn't Ty Wolfenden's night. Just the solitary point when he really did need to pick up a win. But Patrick Dudek, that's a great uh, turnaround in his form tonight. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he produces a really good ride. And uh, that's that's giving himself an outside chance. Yeah, yeah. So that's what winning, but you've got to say that just the 1.4 points for Ty Wolfenden. Once again, where do you start with trying to, to call this race? Well, that, that's your Nicholson. job, that's your I, job, I know, sir. but they're coming from every direction, front, back, everywhere. And Dudek at that point, when they hit the first turn, he's actually stone last, but he makes a, a brave decision to run right round the fence. And on the first lap, just about secures himself second place and then uh, takes charge after Mickelson, uh, who looks like he's going to set himself out front comfortable. He looked quick in a couple of races when he's been out front and won a couple of races already tonight. But uh, Dudek just keeps charging and charging and charging until the job's done. Yeah, good ride from Patrick Dudek there. Terrific scrap for just the solitary point with Wuffenden finally coming through. My, my leg was only ever up that high or out of the footrest when I was crashing. Yes, and uh, that is a modern-day phenomenon that it I is. just don't understand no. at all, because I tried it once a few years ago and just frightened the life out of myself, <laughs> and I thought, no, that's not for me. But Patrick Dudek, he's pleased with that. A bounce back to form, as you rightly say. An opportunity now for the semi-finals. Three points for Dudek, two points for Mickelson, one for Wuffenden, and Pavel Schapelski misses out this time.
We have now just one block of races to come. We see the standings, 11 points for Janowski. Smarsik now forces his way on to nine. Mickelson on eight, Zagar on eight, Leon Madsen on eight. Terrific stuff. Lambert probably needs another couple of points to be absolutely certain. He's back on seven. Big riders outside the top eight already as well, but uh, Janowski leads the way at the top on 11. Well, this has been an outstanding Grand Prix so far, and we've still got uh, the very important big-time races to come. And uh, there's no doubt that some um, uh, riders are going to be up against it. There's going to be some very high rate um, uh, heart rates coming out for their fifth and final rides. We've got Janowski leading the way, but the riders down on five points. Yeah, we've got several that, riders yeah, that we have need to win. We do. Have to exactly, win races. Yeah, riders like Freddie Lindgren, Jason Doyle, Anders Thompson. Now, Anders Thompson, if he makes the top eight tonight, he's on six points. He's turned his night around. That will be some fantastic effort. We're having a good look at uh, Patrick Dudek's uh, bait, a return to form for Patrick. He's in 10th at the moment with a ride to go on five. Yeah. Now, if he can manage to win his last race, as you said earlier, Outside Chris, opportunity he to might get just be able to squeak in if things go his way. And two race wins, which obviously on the count back is going to go for him. Absolutely right. He's got to wait until heat number 20 where he'll go from gate number four. But he is up against a, a, a gentleman called Bartosz Schmarslik. He's not bad. might make his life a little difficult. And Anders Thompson's also in that race as well. Mikkel Mikkelsen working well tonight. He's uh, in third position at the moment on eight points, and there are three of them on eight points. Madsen, Zagar. Zagar turned his night around last time out. Great stuff. People are really enjoying themselves. And I must say that um, uh, they've come out, they haven't seen a Grand Prix for 10 years. And uh, crikey, they've had to they be patient. On some they, event. they are uh, being royally entertained. We all are, we're thoroughly enjoying it. Track grading going on. We've got uh, the last block of rides to come. 17 through to 20. There you can see the ruts down on the start line. Um, the riders that miss out on the top eight after 20 heats will then be awarded their World Championship points. And uh, we will explain that. It, uh, we will um, uh, explain that when we uh, show it to you. Uh, we will have some more reaction from the pits. Well, Robert Lambert's put himself under pressure with seven points with a race to go uh, after such a fantastic start. And he's got Mikkel Mickelson on the inside of him in, in heat 18. Um, a renewed Zagar and uh, Janowski. Tough race. Yeah, he's under a bit of pressure there. He's going to need at least a point. He's got two race wins, which will stand him in good stead. But as you rightly say, Chris, he's got work to do. This man, well, he won't be relaxing, but he's in the semi-finals <laughs> on 11, and he's looked terrific. Although that's a stunning ride from Bartosz Smarslik last time. Uh, certainly uh, reminded everybody what he's all about. He had a couple of indifferent rides in the middle part of the night, but... All of a sudden, Smarslik came from nowhere. You brave, know, he, he almost brave. came from came from the stand. You know, it was unreal. It was truly <laughs> he went extraordinary. Up, he went off to get a hot dog it on is. the first turn. Right, we can get some more reaction very shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking to Anders Thompson, and uh, Scott uh, has rounded him up, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing from Anders. Yes, let's get down to Scott now and get some more reaction. And with Anders Thompson, Anders, a, a tough start to the night, uh, touching the tapes. Did you do the, uh, we're so used to counting the referee, did you forget that we're on the, the computer system? Actually, I didn't forget it. Uh, you know, I was just faster than the new system. Uh, yeah, I was really ready, uh, but, but now I'm, I'm disappointed, you know. I'm, I'm one heat behind with the setup, uh, but uh, I keep focus and see uh, what we can do. 
You've turned it around, you're exceptionally fast, you got a lot of speed your last race here. Fantastic race, so much speed. So uh, have you made many changes over the winter? Obviously you had your first full season in the Grand Prix last year, kind of find your feet a little bit. Have you made many changes in the off season? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, the, now I had uh, one full season in the Grand Prix and um, I know what to do now. Uh, so uh, I have all winter to prepare my season and uh, I think I prepared well. Um, so um, pretty decent start for the, for the season. Uh, anyway, um, I get a good uh, setup in the moment on the bike, so um, we keep focused for the next couple of heats. Yeah, do you think you're going to have to make many more changes, or does the, the track seem like it's settled down and you feel like you've got the setup to see you through to the end now? Yeah, for, for sure. Um, the, last, the last week I've been working really, really hard to, to find the, the, last, uh, the last small changes and the small, last small things. Uh, but uh, I think I have the setup now, and um, now I just need to, to make the starts and make it much easier. Well, so make the starts, good luck for the rest of the night, and hope you make it through to the semis. Cheers. Yeah, it's been a really good effort from Anders Thompson. He's got to be patient. He's got to wait until heat number 20, where he'll go from the gate number three. And a big result there. May just see him squeak through. He's in seventh as we go into yep. the last block of races. I, I do know over the last week or so, he's been testing a couple of new engines. He wasn't totally satisfied with the speed that he had and seems to be working for him. Well, after that... Certainly after the drama of the first race, he has uh, shown a very good uh, good resolve to come through to give himself an outside chance. We'll see the overall standings once again. Janowski looking good on 11, leads the way. Smarslik coming through on nine, three of them on eight points. And um, then the standings vanished in front of us, but there's no question that seven points for Robert Lambert back in sixth, needs points out of his last ride. I would say down from Robert Lambert, all of them, all of them are under big pressure going into this last round of races. Yeah, so uh, competitive. Right down to Dan Bewley. Uh, you know, they, all those guys can qualify. Exactly right. So, um, uh, no, plenty to race for in the upcoming four heats uh, to determine the uh, top eight of the night and the two semi-finals. Riders appearing back out on track. Freddie Lindgren disappointing last time. He's in the yellow helmet colour here. Um, uh, failed to score after looking so strong in the previous race. He's on six points coming into this race. Um, a win would probably see him through. Ty Wolfenden has had a desperately disappointing night and uh, they will be looking to um, salvage something out of this last ride. A semi-final looks beyond him, even yeah. with a win. Yeah, That will only take him on to seven points. So I um, uh, don't quite know where it's gone wrong, but um, I'm sure there'll be a debrief. But uh, for Ty, Fortunately, a poor round like this, at least there's another r nine rounds to go to try and get himself back in the championship race. So um, uh, he'll want to finish with a rattle. And Jason Doyle, who night again started well, all of a sudden, with the exclusion and failing to score, um, really... Yeah, still, still got a chance. It's about Jason Doyle and Frederick Lindgren in this one. They both need to win the race, really, yeah, I would say. They've just got to focus on that. And uh, with Doyle on the inside, well, there is a possibility of that. So, on the inside in red is Jason Doyle. Gate two in blue is Martin Vashelik. Gate three in white is Ty Wuffenden. And going from the outside is fast Freddie Lindgren in the yellow helmet colour. Massive pressure on gates one and four. And four, no doubt about that. Martin Vashelik has tried awfully hard, but uh, points have been very hard come by. What's um, the, the dynamics in the first term? We've just had a track grade. Uh, Frederick Lingen, he does like a big run around the outside, but will there be enough there for him? Will he take the risk and look for a cutback? But of course, sometimes there's traffic in the way when you... What are your thoughts? When you do that? What are your well, thoughts on that? I don't know. I think Jason Doyle is going to be looking to creep around the inside. I don't, I don't see him moving over, but he's a, a tough racer, so you're never quite sure what he's going to do. Settling down. Heat number 17, the green light is on, tapes are up, away they go, Doyle has made a poor start. Got to say, Wolfenden and Vasilik, Vasilik hits the front. That's a surprise, but once again, Doyle, after a dreadful start, has managed to work his way through into second place. Freddie Lingren in third, and Ty Wolfenden, once again, his woes continue. He finds himself out the back. Martin Vasilik out in front. Here comes Ty up the inside. Yeah, good move from Wolfenden. Forced his way through, but he's not done yet. Frederick Lindgren's coming back at him. He's hanging on. Don't think this is going to be enough for Frederick Lindgren or Jason Doyle. Um, that's disappointment for them. Martin
Martin Veselik, a spoiler out in front after a terrific start. Doyle is working overtime. Doyle, has he got anything left? There's a lap and a half to go. Martin Veselik's out in front. Jason Doyle looking for the three points. It's only the three points that matter for Jason Doyle. Martin Veselik responds. He's got a bit of breathing space. Down that back straight. Looks like it's going to end in disappointment for Freddie Lindgren and Jason Doyle here in heat number 17. Veselik wins. Good ride from him. Wish the meeting could start again for Martin Veselik. Disappointment for once again for Woofenden, and just not his night. A night to forget for the former champion. Freddie Lindgren also going out with a bit of a whimper tonight. You've got to say that after looking so strong earlier on. But uh, Martin Veselik, well, that was a very good ride from him. Yeah, from the start again, Jason Doyle's clutch seems to be banging in a little bit too hard. Bike lifts, doesn't go forward. And Vasulik out front. And at this point, we can see the two riders that need the points in the middle of the pack here as Freddie Lindgren uh, manages to get past Ty Wolfenden on the back straight. But uh, as we saw, Ty battles through on the inside. I think we're seeing the move here. It's most of the bike over the curb. We've seen that move a few times tonight. Gets himself ahead of Freddie and not enough for Jason Doyle or Frederick Lindgren in that one. No disappointment for those. And uh, Martin Veselik also had a disappointing night. Finishes with a consolation win at the end of the night, but um, unfortunately for Martin, he will take no further part. He will miss out on the semi-finals, finishing on six points. That won't be enough for the top eight this evening. He'll be frustrated because a ride like that at the end of the night, you'll be thinking, crikey, why couldn't I find the key to the speed earlier on? You can see the frustration there. Three points for Vasilik, two for Doyle, Wuffenden in third on one, and Freddie Lindgren also some big, big hitters here that quite possibly are going to miss out on the semi-finals. Lindgren and Wuffenden certainly going to miss out. Jason Doyle, he's in seventh at the moment, but could possibly, quite probably oh, be overhauled. Yeah, can't There's see a, it. He's on seven. That is a very vulnerable position to be in. Right, heat number 18. They're up at tapes. And uh, Mikkel Mickelson looks like he's the man on the inside, he's on the inside in red. Robert Lambert needing points, he's in gate number two in blue. Matty Zagar looking good now in gate number three in white. And Matze Janowski on 11 points, leading the Grand Prix at this stage. He goes from gate number four yeah, in the Nicole yellow. Mickelson, Robert the yellow Lambert, Matty Zagar, they all need something out of this race. They do indeed, this really is tense stuff. You see the heart rates, 180 beats per minute for Janowski. Calm down. And, uh, yeah, just a couple of deep breaths, please, just to uh, get yourself under control. But uh, certainly Janowski has looked good. Zagar so looked very impressive last time. Send it down. Green light is on. Oh, long pause. Away they go. Zagar's made a fabulous start out of gate number three. Hits that first turn up the inside, here though. Comes yeah, here we go. Janowski around the outside. Fantastic <laughs> move. Superb speed from him. Mikkel Mickelson's out in front, though. He made that move, that dynamic move up the inside. Into the second lap. Mikkel Mickelson. Now, can he come under pressure down the back straight from Janowski? No, it's Zagar. They're oh. coming at him. Left and right. Janowski around the outside. He's hungry for more points. Now, Mickelson moves out. Janowski's gone very wide. Mikkel Oh, my goodness, on the back wheel, out of control. Fabulous speedway again. Mickelson's like a roadblock. I think yanoski has got him beat here. Oh, it was tight again going in turn three. But yanoski has got so much speed. He's got his... Mickelson's coming Mickelson. back. Again. Mickelson coming back into the picture. Fantastic speedway once again. Yanoski won't be leaving it there. Down the back straight for the last time. What a speedway race we're witnessing once again. Mikko Mickelson just about going to hang on. Great Fabulous stuff. speedway. Robert Lambert missing out. That is desperately disappointing for the British rider after such a strong start. Mikkel Mickelson and Matze Janowski look putting on a fabulous show for everybody, royally entertaining us all. And Mikkel Mickelson coming through in flying colours. Terrific speedway once again in heat number 18. Cracking stuff from the start there, the rider in, uh, in white. Matty Zagar makes a good start, but uh, Janowski just got so much speed. He generally he rides right around the berm, on the fence. He'd done that at least three times in this race. He took the maximum traction he could get. It's a brave move. You're, you're just inches away from the fence, generated so much speed on the back straight. But Mickelson battled hard around the inside. He stuck to his guns, trying to make the bike work on the slick stuff. 
But uh, Janoski again, look, look how wide he is. Right out on the berm, not quite so wide that time. And uh, just keeps generating the speed. They trust this track, they trust this track. They, they really are going it, they're putting on a fine show for us all. A wonderful opening event for Dis Discovery Sports events, there's no question about that. We have been treated to some special speedway so far this evening, and the big races are yet to come, Chris. <laughs> Mikkel Mickelson delighted. He picks up three points. He's through to the semi-finals, no question about that. Two for Janowski. Matsi, uh, Matsi uh, Zagar. Got to say, that's a great effort from him. After a slow start tonight, he really has turned his fortune around. He's on nine, and uh, he will be in the semi-finals, that's for sure. Robert Lambert's in six on seven, but but he may be overhauled. But you've got to say, you've got to say Anders Thompson might be somebody who overhauls him, but that's seven in sixth places at the moment. He's vulnerable. Let's put it that way. He's very vulnerable there with two races to come. Yeah, Heat number 19 good. coming up now. And uh, we've got uh, young Jack Holder up at tapes. He's got uh, the inside gate. He goes out of gate number one in red. Gate two in blue is Leon Madsen. And we've got Dan Bewley, who was pretty impressive last time, going out of gate number three in white. And on the outside, Pavel Chapelsky. And uh, yeah, Dan Bewley could drum, still... Uh, Still be in with a shout here. Yeah, good start from him. Chapelski, of course, with that frustrating problem with his steel shoe. Green light is on, away they go. Leon Madsen's made a perler, absolute beauty. Out of gate number two, he hits the front. Down the back straight, he goes. Jack Holder through into second place out of gate number one. Battling hard there in third and fourth. Pavel Chapelski, oh, it's getting awfully, awfully tight with Dan Bewley now relegated to the back. Wasn't much racing room there at all. <laughs> Leon Madsen, though, all the time, once again, the fireworks are going off behind him. The Danish man is out in front and looking really good. Complaining about his health, Chris, but Crikey is riding well this evening. He is, yeah, he's suffering from flu. He doesn't have a lot of energy, but uh, we've seen how fast he is when he gets himself out front. Dan Bewley learning the hard way, just how tough Grand Prix Speedway is, but he's acquitted himself very well, unfortunately, at the back. In this one, Jack Holder picking up another couple of points. That'll do his confidence the world a good. Leon Madsen down the back straight. He's looking good. He had to speak Whoa. very, very tight. Chapelski goes down. And the race completes. Let's keep our fingers crossed that Pavel Chapelski is OK. Yeah, he got he, some uh, speed up the inside just, and just had to back out of it. Yeah, just got himself in all sorts of trouble going into turn three on the final lap. The race has been completed. Dan Bewley picking up an extra point, but uh, won't be enough to see him through to the semi-finals. But um, Leon Madsen on 11 points, that's a good return from Leon. Showed some real determination. Pavel Chapelski sat up. Um, I fancy he'll be OK. He may just yeah. have winded himself a little bit when he bumped on the track. Going fast there. Yeah, very the fast. Back at the end of the straight. Leon Madsen, though, that was a, a great start from him. He uh, flew out of gate number two. And really and truthfully, he, he didn't have too much pressure. He had the speed, had the yeah. composure, and won in fine style. Dan Bewley was the one that reacted very well in that race from the start. But he just didn't make the bike go forward at all. No. Uh, we'll see it again. The start here in, in uh, white, Dan Bewley makes a great reaction, but he just doesn't go forward at all. Leon Madsen, on the other hand, just makes the bike work all the way to the corner. And uh, you have to think at this point, with the speed that he's shown when he's out front, that no one's going to come back at him. Jack Holder, a much better race from him. And as I said, I think that'll sell his nerves and his confidence going into the next round. But uh, Chapelski, it was, I believe that's the first faller this evening, actually. It was indeed, you're right. Oh. We haven't seen that. Um, uh, there we saw some pretty tight action between the two substitute riders coming in. Jack Holder and Dan Bewley, but uh, Pavel Chapelski now dive bombing an opportunist big, move there. Big move up the inside, and that's uh, ultimately what uh, he did in the end. Yeah, he's scrubbed off. I think he's just got his front wheel uh, down there. It's on the there. inside kerb. Front tire yeah. just washed yeah. out on the inside yeah. kerb. And, um, uh, Concrete curbs can do that. When, you, when you're able to yeah. get your front wheel over, yeah. you can just lose traction. There's not a lot to the front tire. We see, it, we see it at Kings Lynn uh, occasionally. That's a concrete kerb. Absolutely. So, Neil Madsen nicely through to the semi-final. He is on 
11 points. He wins, uh, he gets the three points. Jack Holder in second place. After a disappointing start, he's picked up some valuable points later on. Dan Bewley, the solitary point. And Pavel Chapelski just missing out. And there we see the standings. Janowski on 13, Mickelson on 11, Madsen on 11, Smarzek on 9. And um, uh, Pavel Chapelski, good to see him yeah, up and about. Good to see him walking back. Clearly in. frustrated. Pride hurt more than anything else after that fall late on. But uh, he'll be disappointed. He's only scored three points this evening. So um, once again, Grand Prix Speedway really is a tough, tough arena to be in. Right. Up to the last qualifying race now, heat number 20, and still plenty to race for here. This could go either way. I tell you what, all of a sudden, riders on seven, yeah. they may just have a little bit of hope. Outside chance. So they may well have it, because in truth, in eighth place, can't see Martin, Basilic, Lindgren. I tell you what, I think they may well get through on seven points, Chris. They could well do. Because it it's happens. looking good. Looking good, because Thompson is in eighth on six. Yep. which is quite remarkable. Mm. Here we see on the inside, Bartos Smiles looking red. Max Frick in gate number two in blue. Anders Thompson, who really has turned his fortunes around in fine style, will go out of gate number three in white. And on the outside, who was impressive last time, is Patrick Dudek. And, uh, Patrick Dudek in 12th and five. Maybe a win here could see him into That's the second. Started with that exclusion and he's got better and better. He got a third, a second and a win. Yeah, terrific uh, form and speed. He said he was a, a race behind when he was chatting to Scott down in the pits, but I tell you what, he might just be able to get himself back in the top eight. He's in eighth as it stands, and you've got to believe that he has a very good chance of making the semi-finals tonight. Here we go. Martin Smarslick on the inside. Long pause, this is the start. This is the start completely. Into the first corner, it's Max Frick. No question about that. Down the back straight, super stuff from the straight. And now it is Thompson. Thompson absolutely riding out of his skin once again. Superb stuff from the Danish board. Now Bartos Marslick, after a poor start, comes through into the thick of the action, into second place. Real good stuff. Max Frick back. Oh, well, we spoke too soon. We spoke too soon. Smarslick, after a poor start, Fars himself to the front, absolutely on fire. You've got to believe that two points for Thompson is still going to be enough, Chris. Yeah, it's going to be enough, I think. And Smarsdick, not quite as exciting as last time, but he just biding his time and just taking one at a time. Unbelievable the way he goes about his business and works the bike. And Anders Thompson, as you rightly say, looks like it's going to be enough. Brilliant stuff from Thompson. Superb ride once again from Bartosz Smarsdick. You wouldn't put it past him winning here this evening. He really has turned his form around. Back-to-back -back wins and heat his fourth and fifth rides. He moves nicely on now. He's got some... Um, uh, he came into the last race. He moves on to 12 points. That's looking good for the two Polish riders actually leading the way. And Janowski and Bartosz Smarzlik. Once again, a stunning move mid-race to see, but what, he made a poor start there. He did Frick. by his high standards, it was a poor start, but Max Frick, don't take it away from him, he made a great one. And um, this is where Anders Thompson hits the front, that brave move up the inside. I've seen it so many times tonight. Uh, it's, it's a sort of an old Thomas Gollard move, that, just coming from the fence, straight lining it up the inside. I wish to see that from Thomas quite a bit. And uh, there's Max just picking up. Maybe that cost him just getting a little bit too much traction as he leaves the first turn there. And, and it's Thompson up the inside, but Smilesick, you've just got to hear he's in third place, uh, he, but he just works it out slowly, he doesn't panic, uh, unlike the previous race when he just went past everybody on the back straight first lap. Well, it's looking like the riders on seven points are going to make it tonight. We will wait for the FIM to confirm the placings in the top eight. Fabulous stuff from Bartosz Smilesick. He's comfortably uh, through on 12 points after his five outings. Just had a couple of slip-ups um, where he found it a little bit tougher going, but the last two rides where he's come through the traffic have just been absolutely stunning. So three points for Bartosz. He'll be really pleased with that. Determination written all over his face, that's for sure. Three points for Smarsley. <laughs> Anders Thompson in two. Max Frick on one. Patrick Dudek missing out this time. There we see the leader, Janowski on 13. 12 for Smarsley. Mickelson on 11. Leon Madsen, the top eight at the moment, before it's confirmed, we're looking at Doyle and Lambert squeaking in, which up. is really quite a bonus for them. Lingren, Vasilik, Bewley, Dudek, Wuffenden, Jack Holder, Frick, all missing out this evening.
we have witnessed some super qualifying races already. Well, it's been exciting stuff, Chris. You it's know, it's, uh, it's been terrific stuff. We've got a now another track grade. And we will have com confirmation from the FIM of the top eight. But uh, to me, I think those two lads on Lambert and Doyle on seven points have made it. Yeah, yeah, I believe they have. And I, I love seeing those camera shots and smiles look after a race because it'd make a great poker player, wouldn't it? It gives nothing away. You look at his face, <laughs> is he excited? I don't know. Is he disappointed? I don't know. You know, he's just calculated, concentrating, yeah, he working is out his next move. Yeah, but the last two rides uh, have been stunning. And uh, hence that the two Polish boys and Janowski and Smarslik are leading the way on 13 and 12 respectively. Um, uh, I do believe that we are going to see Robert Lambert and Jason Doyle make the top eight this evening. And of course, you can still go away with 20 World Championship points, even if you just squeeze on seven points into the um, uh, final tonight and manage to win it. We're going to see the gate pick shortly for the semi-finals. And uh, well, Kelvin. What would you be taking? I think at this stage now, I think I'd probably go for the inside gate now. Yeah. I think I, I know it's not a straightforward choice, but I think with all the different permutations, I think if I had, if I was in Matze Janowski's decision, gates one or two, gates yeah, yeah, one or yeah. two. I, I think I concur with that, with the track grade going on. Uh, I think you why, need to you control you the race. asking me the hard questions? That's your job, sir. OK, sir. OK, well, I've answered it track grading going on it's been a fabulous night of speedway for the opening round this has been a really good benchmark got to say we go to warsaw in two weeks time and it's got something to live up to <laughs> it has but i'm looking forward to it yeah absolutely so right there's place gonna, is going to be packed it will indeed and uh, it's been uh, a thoroughly enjoyable speedway event it's um uh, important people have traveled from far and wide to be here and uh they, uh, I know that some friends have come all the way from New York to come wow. over to watch wow. this meeting. So very keen Speedway fans. That is keen. It is indeed. So uh, I know that they will be loving the action out on track. Uh, yeah, I said it earlier on, the Pavlix family that own and built this track and look after it have done an outstanding job. job. Yeah, the hospitality through the day has been terrific. Um, Real party atmosphere now, the loud music in the stadium, the fans have been at the fan zone this afternoon. So it's, it's been a great day. It has indeed. Quite a long day for everybody with qualifying at lunchtime. Yeah, tough on the riders, I think. We will see the overall standings once again, Chris. We've got the top eight there now clear. Uh, I'm not going to say that's absolutely confirmed until I hear it, but uh, it is looking like Jason Doyle and Lambert have made it on seven points. Thompson is a great effort. Uh, Zagar also turned his night around. Madsen, Mickelson, Smarslik, Janowski, all with double-figure scores, comfortably through to the semi-finals. Anders Thompson is in the ascendancy. You just wouldn't put it past him, would you? No, big, big hitters have missed out. Uh, Wolfenden and yep. uh, Lingren, no question about that. They will be very disappointed. But um... right, we won't be too much longer now before we see the um, picks for semi-finals one and two. Um, well, we will be really interesting to see which way the boys go with their, their uh, picks for the gates. When we did qualifying earlier today, Barta Smarslik, who had the fastest time, didn't hesitate to take no. draw number five, which gave him two inside gates. As it turned out, they didn't really work out that well. No. And in reality, um, it's been a pretty fair night. We won't have stats from the winners from all the gates, and I can't remember exactly, but it's been winners from every angle it's to been be honest. quite varied yeah it has indeed surprisingly so if i'm honest and uh, just looking at our graphics there Bartos smarzik once again producing the best lap time of the race meeting on a 14.7 but you've got to bear in mind earlier today it was a 14.3 right here we go with the draw for the semi-finals Riders gathering now. And say Janowski there at the head of the queue. And uh, be interesting to see which way he goes here for semi-final. 
I'd be surprised if he goes for an outside gate, Chris, but... I would. It, um, he has made some okay. good moves First on the outside. First choice for gate selection for semi-final one, Masiek Janowski. Uh, Janowski making his way forward. Yeah. Gate number two for Janowski. Second choice for position, Leon Madsen. Leon Madsen, who's had a good, strong night. Um, gate number one is available to him. Calling his name, I think. And uh, looking for advice from someone, uh, Anthony Leon. Olsen, maybe. Yeah, well, the inside gate probably was the right call there. Probably a little bit surprised to actually have it. And third choice for semi final one, Anders Thompson. Having a great night. Brilliant effort from the Danish rider. Two Danes in this uh, semi final, number one, making his way up. He will go out of gate number three in the first semi. Thompson, who's done himself proud tonight. He really has ridden out of his and skin. And final choice for semi-final one, Robert Lambert. Lambert now coming forward. And uh, a relieved man, actually, to make the semi-finals. Yeah. He goes from the outside gate. So let's just reiterate. Leon Madsen on gate number one. Gate number two is Matze Janowski in blue. And as Thompson will go out of gate number three in white. Thank you, and guys. Go forward. Robert Lambert will go from the outside in yellow. Good-looking semi-final. Tough race. Uh, they don't get easy at this time of the night, that's oh, for no, sure. They don't. And uh, I've got to say that uh, Madsen could well be a favourite, but uh, uh, Janowski, mm. got some work to do there, not guaranteed to come through. First two okay, make the first final, choice of course. for semi-final two, Bardos Smarslek. So Smarslek up, making his way forward. Gate two seems to be a favourite. Smarslek oh, off of uh, gate number two in blue. Waiting for the next rider to be called forward by Phil Morris, the race director. And uh, not quite sure where he is. I think we may be waiting for him. Second choice for semi-final two is Mikael Mikkelsen. Mikael Mikkelsen just, uh, yep, deciding to go for the inside gate. Mikkelsen, who once again has ridden well, scored 11 Third points choice for semi-final two, Mate Jaga. That's his Agar. Terrific night for the wild card. Could it be his night? Could he go through to the final and win it? Wow. Zagar out of gate three. And last choice for semi-final two is Jason Doyle. Doyle, like Lambert, a touch relieved. He's had a disappointing, frustrating night, but he's found himself in the semi-finals, coming off the outside, and he's just the sort of character that could just make the best of that. Yeah, and you're not out of it coming off gate four. Inside is Bartosz Smarsik in red. Anders Thompson coming out of gate number two in blue. Max Frick. Not sure it is mm. Max Frick. And actually, nope. that, that, that graphic is incorrect. <laughs> Zagar that will come out of gate number three in white. And off the outside, you've got Jason, Jason Doyle, Doyle, who will go there from gate number four as in I, yellow. As I was saying, gate, gate four, you're, you're not out of it because uh, no. you only need something to go on in the first turn. Gap opens up. The second semi-final, there will be dirt on the outside. Yeah, yeah, you might will. be able to do something pretty spectacular around the outside. Bikes now just being readied for the first semi-final. We have witnessed some superb speedway. The opening round of the World Championship here in Croatia, Gorosan tonight, has really done the speedway world proud. Everybody concerned in this event will be delighted with the way it's gone so far. Three big, big races where the big World Championship points are handed out, coming up for you very shortly. It's uh, nobody's left, that's for sure. It's been uh, very entertaining as well. Some of the big guns have missed out. You've got to say Wolfenden and Freddie Lindgren missing out on the semi-finals. That is quite a shock. And uh, they'll be licking their wounds. So we just see the uh, graphic now with Zagar now in the semi-finals. He was a touch disappointed <laughs> a moment ago when Frick was put in there. But Zagar is there coming out of gate number three for semi-final number two. We will wait for that. We'll be patient for that because semi-final number one isn't too far away. And um, although Janowski's had a great night, there's no doubt that um, uh, Janowski's still got a um, job to do. Yeah, I think it's... Very, very brave to uh, allow Leon Madsen off the We can inside. hear now from Ty Wolfenden down in the pits with Scott. Ty Wolfenden, certainly not the start to the Grand Prix series he wanted in 2022. Nah, garbage, mate. Uh, we tried a lot of things and didn't have any, like everything we did, we couldn't get the bike to go forward. So um, that's why I'm stood here right now. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate um, without going into too much detail, but can you pin it down? Do you feel you had too much power or was it not enough? Uh, too much. I, I tried everything I could to, to stop it, but we went one sprocket down, uh, high jet, small jet, high ignition, low ignition, just couldn't stop it at all. And to have four points from four rides is, uh, is garbage. So, uh, yeah, I'm really struggling for words without saying stuff that I'm allowed to say on TV. Right, well, we'll go before we swear, but the new point system, it may not all be over. It's still an awful long way to go yet, so keep your chin up, and we know you've got it in the bag. Yeah, 100%, you know, it's, uh, it's always a long season, so uh, I guess it's nice to get this one out of the way, and after the weekend I've had, you know, with the van breaking down, forgetting my passport and all that sort of stuff, it's been a nightmare. So. It's done, mate, mate, so move on. Thank Good luck. You. Been a difficult weekend for the three-time world former world champion, but uh, we know he'll bounce back in two weeks' time in Warsaw. Uh, boys are making their way round to the uh, start line. We've got less than a minute before the first semi-final gets underway. Leon Matson on the inside. He's enjoyed a good night. Matze Janowski topped the charts. Going, he goes out of gate number two in blue. Anders Thompson coming out of gate number three in white. And on the outside, Robert Lambert, who qualified on seven points. He goes off the outside in yellow. Can Robert make the final? That really would be a turnaround yeah, after would. a disappointing last couple of rides. As I was saying, a uh, brave move to allow Leon Madsen on the inside. He's made pretty good starts tonight. He's got a lot of speed. Yeah. Um, as we were saying, Anders Thompson's in the ascendancy. He's got better and better and better as the night's gone on. So, um, yeah. Difficult to call. Difficult you, to call. You, know, you put yourself in the middle of that. I, I, I would have been <laughs> tempted to go off uh, gate one, but yeah, there we go. Absolutely. But Janowski didn't hesitate. He went for gate number two. Settling down. Green light is about to come on. It's on. Tapes are off. Away they go. Neck and neck to the first corner. Janowski just about. What a move from Lambert. Lambert now up on the inside. Now Janowski. Thompson round the outside. Janowski. Thompson neck and neck through turns three and four in the opening lap. They complete the lap. Thompson hits the front. What a night of speedway. He's enjoying the Danish rider. Now, Janowski responding very, very tight. Very tight as they go down the back straight for the second time. Janowski's going to push him all the way because there's just nothing in this race. He doesn't want to put himself vulnerable to be overtaken again and miss out on a final spot. But he can't quite find the pace to get himself he's past him. He's he, faster than Thompson. He just can't get himself past him. He doesn't want to go outside. Keep your eyes on Leon Madsen. Madsen now working hard on the outside. One lap to go in the first semi-final. Out in front, Anders Thompson is riding supremely well. Janowski down the back straight. Leon Madsen now one corner to go. Don't think he's going to get there. No, no. Anders Thompson and Janowski through to the final. What a night for Anders Thompson. You've got to praise that boy. After a desperately disappointing start in his first ride where he just literally roared through the tapes, he comes through in flying colours and uh, finds himself in the final alongside Matze Janowski. What a ride from Anders Thompson. Brilliant night. As I said, he's been looking for a little bit more speed out of his bikes in the last week and started testing a few different engines. But, uh, yeah, it does a great job. And uh, it looked like Leon Madsen had made the best reaction there, but uh, Janowski just works the bike, finds his way through the gap, but Anders Thompson all the time is just building that momentum, taking the wide line, using the dirt, that little bit of extra grip that's out there, not a lot after the track grade, and it does get very tight going into turn three, but uh, Anders Thompson, as, as we've said, you know, he's just getting faster and faster, that confidence is building. It is indeed, that was a terrific effort from the Danish rider coming through in flying colours to make the final here this evening after it was all doom and gloom earlier on in the evening. I was talking to uh, Hans Nielsen earlier today, the Danish team manager, and he said that uh, he wanted to get a Dane in every final throughout the year, and he felt that with the three he's got, he could do that. Yeah, well, so far so good. Up at tape, semi-final number two, Thompson's through to the final. His work is not done yet. So on the inside, Anders Thompson Good winning time, Matze Janowski in second, Leon Madsen and Robert Lambert missing out this time. Semi-final number two then, and it's got something to live up to. Semi-final run going very nicely indeed. Mikkel Mikkelsen is on the inside here because uh, Bartosz Sparslik actually chose to go out of gate number two, as did his compatriot in semi-final number one. In the inside, Mikkel Mikkelsen in red. 
On gate number two in blue is Bartosz Smarsley. Gate number three in white is Matty Zagar. Good night for him so far. And on the outside, we've got Jason Doyle, who once again, like Robert Lambert, got in here on seven points. But Doyle, maybe something stunning in that first corner. Maybe could he force his way through into the top two? I'm sure this is going to be action-packed, Chris. <laughs> we haven't seen a double race all night, Kelvin, and this isn't going to be one. No, it isn't. This lineup is strong. There's no question about that. Heart rates. Well, not too bad. Probably I could just about cope with 163. <laughs> 163. Settling down now. Not too long now before the green light comes on. There it is. Oh, long pause. And away they go. Bartos Smarsley out of gate number two makes a terrific start. Fires himself into that first corner. Roars down the back straight. And he hits the front. He's pulling away. Mikkel Mickelson now settling in second place. Zagar's out wide. Doyle's at the back. Got to say from there, going to be a hard man to pass. Bartos Smarslik, terrific start. He's looking better and better the longer the night goes on, Bartos Smarslik. And how often do we say it? You know, he'll just keep working with his pick through, finding every advantage he can. He looks very comfortable out front. Uh, fair to say, Matty Zagar hasn't given up, but I just don't think he can find that base now. Yeah. Just over a lap to go. Smarslick looking good. Michael Mickelson also settled nicely in second place. Zagar trying everything he knows back in third place, but just not able to land a blow. So it's looking like we're going to get a second Polish rider through to the final this evening. And Bartosz Smarslick wins. He's through to the final. Michael Mickelson follows him home in second place. He joins Bartosz Smarslick in the final tonight. Matty Zagar will be disappointed. I'm sure he was desperate to make the final. He'll do a lap of honour and wave goodbye to his fans uh, before he goes back to the pits. But Bartosz Smarslik in his last three outings really has come on strong. And you've got to believe that the rest of the opposition, the other three riders in the final, will be concerned. Here we see it again, Chris. Yeah, cracking stuff from Smarslik. He's just uh, he's looking you know, more and more comfortable with the conditions, comfortable with his bike as the night's gone on. One thing that he's, he's lacking a little bit, not so much in this race, but he's not made consistent starts tonight, which is always good for us watching. Um, Certainly is. <laughs> provides the entertainment for us. And this race settled down fairly early on. Zagar kept having a go. And there he is, just uh, riding around the track. Well, he's had but, uh, a good night. Yeah, he's pulling a few wheelies, and the fans here love him. But uh, this race was all about these two, Smarslik, Mickelson, in the final. was indeed, and Smarslik through to the final, where he expected to, to see him. And uh, joined by the European champion, Mikkel Mickelson, riding strongly this evening. And uh, there will be another Danish rider in there as well. So two Danes making the final this evening, with Anders Thompson coming through in fine style in the first semi-final. And uh, fans now, here we see the result. Bartosz Smarslik winning in fine style. Mikkel Mikkelsen comfortably through in second place. They got just missing out, but he's had a good night. He'll be pleased with that as well, card. And uh, Jason Doyle, unfortunately, not just being quiet at the races in the latter part of the meeting. Started well, but uh, faded away, but made the semi-finals. Picked up some good World Championship points. Uh, but um, uh, we will see the boys coming forward very shortly for the final. No track rating now for the final. Um, we will see Smiles that come forward for the first pick. And as Thompson will have the second one. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if Smiles that goes for gate number two once again. He made a good good run to the first corner out of gate two that last time. Yeah, I think um, both Yanoski and Smarzik proved that uh, possibly is the gate to have right now. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, although uh, you've got to give a lot of credit to Thompson. Thompson yeah, yeah. coming through there, yeah, I mean, no, proving, proving that you can win from another gate, that's for sure. But um, uh, I suspect that the inside gates will be favoured by the boys that get the preferable picks, the first picks, no question. And the track's not going to be graded by the looks of things before the final. Never so, do. Uh, no, they never do. So no. that's, that, that's a good thing. That's the right way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. So we will be waiting patiently now before the boys come forward to um, make their choices. Fans have had a wonderful time. The sound system, the enthusiasm from all concerned has really Brilliant made show. this a terrific night to, to be at. It's been an event. It's been something to really 
remember and uh, these fans will go home and say that they have witnessed something pretty special one big race to go first final of the year here in Gorosan in Croatia it's been a fabulous night of speedway it's a new era of speedway for discovery sports events and they will be delighted I'm sure there would have been some nerves a little bit of anxiety kicking about there's no doubt about that but crikey they've come out with a real um, uh, special event so they can be proud of themselves I'm sure they will be touch relieved as well I suggest but uh, um, very much so I think they've worked very hard for this event first one and uh, they've pulled it off it's been absolutely fantastic truly successful weekend uh, it's just a shame that we've got to wait two weeks for the next one yeah but it would maybe take a couple of weeks to get over this one. I'm going to be quite tired by the time we get home. It's going to be a long weekend. There's been a lot to do today with the qualifying in the, the middle of the day. And the track has held up really well. Oh, fantastically well. Brilliant. Brilliant race surface. Yep. So um, uh, fans just uh, taking a few breaths, a little bit of refreshment before the final. The is, first rider uh, to select start position for the final, Bartos Smarzlek. Selects blue. Smarslik, no surprise at all, will no. come out of gate number two. No hesitation from him. Poker face on. Yeah, poker face on. Well, this is the business end of the meeting. Second choice this is for the gate pick for the final, Anders Thompson <laughs> selects white. Oh. Well, okay. he made that work previously and yep. uh, quite clearly feels comfortable there, so replicating his semi-final start position. Third choice for the final gate pick is Masiek Janowski. Janowski. Magic selects red. No hesitation from Janowski. Goes straight for the inside gate. And final pick for the final gate choice is Mikkel Mikkelsen. Mikkel who Mikkelsen. selects yellow. No choice for Mikkelsen. He had to go for the outside gate. So the two Danish riders on gates three and four and the Polish boys on gates one and two. And uh, really has been a terrific night of speedway. And uh, the final, actually, has got something to live up to because we have had some sensational speedway. Poland v Denmark, who's coming out on top. Yeah, well, um, uh, I would say um, the stats would suggest probably <laughs> that Poland should yep. should win it. But um, uh, it isn't one on paper, it's one on shale over four laps. But um, my feeling is, my instinct is, is that Bartosz Smarslik is just narrowly, narrowly the favourite to pick up his first Grand Prix win of the season. Janowski yeah, showed some stunning speed earlier on tonight, but um, just dropped a couple of points later on, but he's there in the final. Maximum score, of course, you're going to get here for a win. It's 20 World Championship points, 18 for second, 16 for third, 14 for fourth. So this is where you want to be for those big, big point scores. And uh, for Bartosz Smarslik, of course, the red-hot favourite for this year's championship will be very keen to get his campaign off and sort of sort of set, set a marker uh, down for the season. Yeah, it's not far away now. I can see uh, Magic Janowski, Anders Thompson looking over the fence now, just trying to uh, set their mindset on that first turn. Bartosz Smarslik is now in his 39th final. He's actually won 15 of them, Chris, so he's had a pretty decent he record he does indeed and this is the 26th final for Matze Janowski and he goes off the inside and he's won eight Grand Prix and as Thompson well he's made one final mm -hmm. and he hasn't won one yet so um, maybe tonight could be, very much be his and uh, Mikkel Mikkelsen the European champion certainly he hasn't made a final so this is his first final outing tonight so he'll be looking to get on at the very least to get on the rostrum always disappointing to miss out on the rostrum when you are yeah. in the final of course you, are. you finish fourth you still had a good night but you miss out on all the glory of standing on top on the box yeah as you say it's been a good night but you finished with the last place yeah it's, it's, you know it's that's, a, that's what you remember sure exactly it's not what you want riders out on track We've had a great night of Speedway. We have had a fabulous evening. Fantastic. And uh, the, the crowd have just uh, loved every moment of it. There's no doubt about it. And we have been, I certainly have been uh, pleasantly surprised of how good the racing has been here in Gorashan this evening. It has been truly outstanding. And uh, we've got approximately 60 seconds to determine the first winner of the 2022 
World Championship Grand Prix campaign. And uh, it's... I've got to ask you, Kelvin, who's it going to be? Oh, well, I, I, I've got to put... Uh, I've got... My favourite is um, Bartosz Schmarslik. Well, since you've taken Schmarslik, I said it earlier, it could be a spoiler. I'm going to go with Thompson. Yep. And uh, I can understand that. He has written... Some... On the inside, Matt Siganowski out of gate number one in red. Gate two in blue is Bartosz Schmarslik. Gate three in white is Anders Thompson. And off the outside in yellow is Mikko Mikkelsen, who's ridden really nicely. The two-time European champion, actually, um, uh, has uh, ridden superbly well. Plenty of work going on the start. Nerves there. Janowski, once again, his heart rate right up there, 172. Bartosz Marslik, I mean, he's, he's uh, so calm. He's 136. He wouldn't know he's uh, just gone for a little jog around the park. And he comes out of gate number two. <clears throat> Anders Thompson. Mikkel Mickelson. Can Thompson do something spectacular? Can he win his first yeah. Grand Prix, his second final in his uh, career? Or will it be Mikkel Mickelson in his first, his debut in the final? Fantastic. Janowski's ready. Start Marshall's getting a little impatient, wants the boys to settle down. They're close between gates two and three, that's for sure. Green light's about to come on. Here we go. The grand final. Tapes are up and away they go. Janowski makes a good jump. But Smarzlik's there. Oh, oh there they go. Mickelson has gone down. down. Bit of contact between Thompson and Mickelson on the way to the first turn. First, first corner incident of the night. We've had to wait yeah. until heat 23 before any first turn drama. What are your thoughts there, Chris? Well, I need to see it again, but um, I've, I've got a feeling that all there's four. a definite case for all four back. That's all what I'd like four. to see. That's but, my, uh, that's of course, we, we need to take another look at it, really. All four, I was, uh, that's my instinct, all four yeah. back. Here we see it again, mate. Yeah, they come from the start. Pretty even break, as you would expect in a final. Ooh, I don't know. I need to see some closer angles of that one. He could go. Very even break from the start. Smarzlik working the clutch hard. And as Thompson got the front wheel in the air, maybe for too long, but this is where it happens. Mickelson, yeah, he's trying to come across. You'd expect that. It's a Grand Prix final. There's going to need to be contact here. Am I not? There could be. I can't see from there. There really could be. Well, Chris, I, I've got to say that um, I think it will probably be yeah, all four. There, there's contact. There's, I, I think it is. should be all four. Yeah, referee's made his decision. We're having that confirmed now. Uh, yes, but Steen Toft has uh, made his decision, and we will see all four riders back at tapes, which is a good news. Yeah. We want to see four riders in the final. He hasn't had much to do tonight, but he's made no, his right decision there. It's been, it's been a pretty cool night, actually, for the referee. He hasn't had too many awkward decisions to make, that's for sure. And in truth, my instinct was there straight away that we would see all four riders back in the rerun. Slight dis delay here with Mickelson just making his way back to his pit bay. Very impressive pit bays, I must say. Brand new. Very, very, very impressive indeed. Um, but um, it's um, an opportunity for his team just to. This is an issue where now Phil Morris is kind of in charge. He will give. The, uh, the nod to the referee when he feels that a sufficient amount of yeah. time has passed for Mikkel Mickelson to get his equipment ready for the yeah, rerun. The so he'll keep... The director determines the yeah, time he, that he, the, Absolutely the right, needs. absolutely right. So, that's how it should be. Yeah. yeah, so he's in the pits there keeping an eye on the work that's going on Mikkel Mickelson's bike. We're seeing it again. Yeah, uh, Mikkel Mickelson tries to come across. You know, that's what you've got to do. It's a Grand Prix final. Could he have been uh, excluded? Could he have been excluded uh, for that? It would have been very, very hard. OK, all right. Yeah, just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, he's, he's been ridden into. The, the oh. bottom line is he, has, he hasn't darted right across. Yes, he's, he's come across a bit. He's had to straighten up. But at the end of the day, there's uh, been It's contact. the right call. It's yeah. the right call. Yeah, right Definitely. And uh, we will see both of the Danish riders back up at tapes. Mickelson just giving himself just a few himself moments. Down. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And your work for the mechanics. Got to check everything now. Yeah, well, make, make sure there's some fuel in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very important, that. Thank mm. What are they up to there? What are they up to there? What are they getting... You know, they're putting fuel they're, in they're the bike, obviously. Putting fuel in. Obviously, they're cooling the clutch. Um, there can sometimes be a little bit of clutch damage when the bike goes down like that because it falls straight onto the clutch. It's the first thing that takes the impact. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, the clock's running down. Just uh, just over a minute and a half. But I, I, I think they've got this covered. Yep. And Nielsen yeah. there. Minute and, and a half to go. Him. Minute and a half to go for all four riders to be at tapes. They must be at tapes. Sparta Smarslik takes the short route. And uh, is already there, up at tapes, ready to go. And uh, Matze Janowski arriving also on the inside. Anders Thompson is just uh, gently making his way round. Just over a minute to go before Anders, uh, excuse me, Mikkel Mikkelsen needs to be back at tapes. Second time of asking, on the inside in red is Matze Janowski. Gate number two in blue, Bartosz Marsley. Gate number three in white is uh, Anders Thompson. And Mikkel Mikkelsen, who is now entering the arena, will go from the outside in yellow. And uh, will he stay on his motorbike this time? Hugely competitive race. The nerves are jangling now. Second time of asking, Chris. Yeah, first attempt was a very even break. Um, Got to say, I think it will be again. Yeah, I fancied the man in blue, that's for sure. Uh, Bartosz Marslik, but uh, as I say, at this sudden death now, Really have got to keep your nerves together. I've got to say that 180 heart rate there. I wonder if that machine is correct, because I'm going to say 180 beats per minute. <laughs> Certainly, that's a Janowski. His heart is pounding away there on the inside. Settling down, second time of asking. The grand final, opening round of the World Championship. Here we go. Away they go to the first turn. Bartosz Smarslik, fabulous start from gate number two. Here they come up the inside. Anders Thompson. Oh, wow, how tight was that? Mikkel Mikkelsen, excuse me, it was Mikkelsen who forced his way to second place. Janowski now trying around the outside. Bartosz Smarzik's away. He's got the victory in his back pocket. Now Janowski responds, roaring around the outside. Will it be a Dane? Polish, one, two, but once again, Mikkelsen's there. Janowski now switches to the inside, Chris. Yeah, Smarzik took him a... Quite a while this evening to find the perfect setup, but look at him going away in a fast in a class field. These guys have all been fast tonight, but Smarznik really comfortably out front. And it looks like Janowski settled down for, for second place this evening. The Danes scrapping it out at the back. Down the back straight for the last time of the evening. Bartosz of Smarznik absolutely in a class of his own in the final. Comes out of the last corner and Bartosz of Smarznik wins in Croatia here in Gorishan this evening. Fabulous effort once again. The former world champion coming alive. The longer the meeting went on, the better he got. Superb stuff from Bartosz Marslik. Matze Janowski, strong performance back in second place. A Polish one, two on the evening. And there, Mikkel Mikkelsen in third, and Anders Thompson just missing out on the rostrum. What a performance. All day he's been on top of his game. Smarslik topped the qualifying. And now wins the Grand Prix. Fantastic start to the series for him. Well, totally dominant. Fastest man in the qualifying. Took uh, the start position number five. Comes through in flying colours in the final. Sensational start. Celebrates with his team. They'll be delighted. He will have a massive weight of expectation this year, but this man, he can cope with it. He's shown he can. He couldn't have made a better start. And for Bartosz Marslik, he's just thrown the gauntlet down. Come and get me if you can. Chris, what a performer. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And he, he had to work for the points. It's not like he just made cracking starts all night. He was coming, he, he was winning races from fourth. He was indeed. He saw some stunning performances, you're right. Janowski, can he find that? Can he find the consistency well, to take the fight to Smarznik? Well, he started well, yep. and in two weeks' time, in his own country in Warsaw, we will see if he can back it up and produce another display, something like that. We know that Smarznik can. He's overjoyed. He's delighted. <laughs> now we're seeing a bit of emotion. That poker face, I would suggest, has just slipped a moment. Mickelson in third. Thompson, well, Thompson's done extraordinarily well yeah, just, to make the final. Fair play to him after such a disappointing night. Here we see it again. Yeah, Anders Thompson's taking the long way round, but he just can't generate that speed against a quality lineup in the final. But Bartosz Smarslik, he needed to make at least one more decent start tonight, and that was it. When the pressure was on, he knew what he was doing. And you can see there, Mikkel Mikkelsen just looking for a way up the inside. 
and at that point just can't find his way past Janoski. A uh, cracking night for Janoski. At times he's been exceedingly quick. Yeah, and we've seen that before from him, and he's ridden nicely. But uh, I, I think that um, there's no question that uh, it's been a fabulous night of Grand Prix Speedway. And uh, it's been, you haven't been able to take your, uh, your eyes off no. it all night long. Uh, and now we've got the presentation to come. But that man, absolutely outstanding. You've got to feel for Artem Laguta now. I've got to make a, make a mention of it because he was the only one last year that could yeah. keep the same pace. He's not here. And somebody, somebody, maybe it could be Janowski, has got to be able to try and to put some pressure on Bartosz Smarslik. But Smarslik, with all the red-hot favourite coming in, produces a stunning display here this evening. All the press, all the photographers now rushing out to try and get the best pictures of the boys up on the rostrum. The celebrations are not too far away. Here we see the World Championship points. 20 for Smarzik, 18 for Janowski, 16 for Mickelson, Thompson on 14. Madsen, Zagar, Lambert, Jason Doyle, all um, uh, respectively there, but uh, Smarzlik goes away from round number one as the championship leader. Can't do better than that. So, there we see it, disappointment for Wuffenden, but um, uh, he'll bounce back in a couple of weeks. But, uh, Well, great scenes out on the podium there. We're waiting for riders to come up. I'm sure there'll be some interviews as well that we will hear from the winner. I'm sure we'll be hearing from Bartosz Schmarzik very soon. And um, it's uh, customary that uh, the interview is done pretty much directly after the final. We're just waiting for that to happen. I can see him getting into position. So here we have the winner of round one here in Croatia, Bartosz Schmarzik. How good does that feel? Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy because the whole meeting I'm so have uh, the bad start. But today evening in the gate two in the final two times make it the best start, and I'm uh, very happy about it. And uh, I never uh, win GP the first round, and today I make it, and I'm very happy. Yes, you're saying you weren't making good starts, so did you feel an awful lot of pressure to make the right gate choice in that final? What? Did you feel a lot of pressure to make the correct choice of the gate position? What the pressure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. You deal with the I, pressure pretty good. I'm really, I don't looking for this one. I uh, want to make it uh, my job because I love it speedway and that's it. Well done, Bartosz, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Bartosz Smarzlik, the winner here in Croatia, the opening round of the 2022 World Speedway Championship. A terrific effort from him. You can see there the big beaming smile. He's absolutely delighted. Yeah, the poker face has dropped. It has indeed, it just slipped. Be back in two weeks' time, that's for sure, in Warsaw. So now, Nico Mickelson making his way forward. Good effort from the European champion. Third place for him on the night. That's uh, good work. Hard move early in the final to force his way through into a rostrum place. I thought for a moment he was going to get the better of Janowski. Yeah, chased him down. He's had speed all night, but uh, Janowski also having speed, but says. So Great to see Mikko McCluson up there. Yeah, the first end. final, and he gets on the roster. He'll yeah. be pleased. He'll be very pleased with that. Yeah, great effort from Mikko Mikkelsen. And uh, more to come from him. Matt Janowski, a very good opening uh, round for him. We've seen him do it before, of course, but uh, at times tonight, he yeah, really did very well impressed. last year as well. He did, yeah, so time will tell. But uh, second place tonight, he'll be pleased with that. Now the main man of the night, Bartosz Smarzlik. He'll stand on top of the box. He's got used to that. Yeah, top he's, spot. Uh, he's deserve won a lot of Grand Prix already in his short career. That's his 16th win of his career. Wow. And uh, we are not too far away from the Polish national anthem. And we'll be hearing that very shortly. But a terrific night for Bartosz Smarzlik.
Well, there we are, the national anthem. We may get used to hearing that this year. Something tells me Bartosz Smarsnik wants his crown back. He does, and uh, he could have won three on the spin, but it wasn't to be. But uh, could it be his third championship?